So, once we last off, or when we left off um, from our intrepid heroes or villains or however you want to explain them, um, they had uh, found they had found um, the Lady of Shadows uh, area uh, lair. They had uh, dismantled her dismantled her entire pretty much, or at least as far as they are aware, their enti her entire organization within the town of Loudwater. Um, the uh, from there they went and talked to Lady Moonfire. Found out a few. Found out that a few of the um, individuals in the town guard were also corrupt, and informed her upon informed her of those individuals as well. Uh, there were a few other uh, things that they wanted to make sure um, that were ready to go before meet before heading out on their voyage. They met at Lady Moonfire's house. Her daughter, uh, or not her daughter, her cousin. Her niece, sorry, wow, I cannot think tonight. Lord. Uh, her niece, um, Brea Voxereth, um, who, who is the niece of Lady Cecile Moonfire. Um, they, uh, oh, Jesus, I'm fucking this up tonight, sorry guys. Uh, Brea, um, or as I called her last session, Brie, we're gonna, her, I have been, uh, hence then calling her Brea in my mind to make sure I'm running that correctly. Brea um, had a, had come to Loudwater from a uh, from the capital city of Eros after having received word um, that uh, her cousin uh, was missing. Al Alea or Alea, Alana, Elena, Elena. Thank you. One of those wordings. Too many NPCs to keep track of. Um, after receiving word that Elena was uh, missing, she uh, hired uh, using her connections from her father. Uh, Started to ship to Loudwater, and uh, made it there to investi begin investigating this case further. Um, her our, pa our our party's paths crossed with Brea at her at her aunt's house, uh, and uh, they uh, decided that the next best place for them to begin looking for these missing children of Loudwater and of this area is the capital city of Eros, and uh, potentially even proceeding through there um, onto Plona having received a few tips um, that this is where the children uh, were being progressively shipped to um, throughout uh, the kingdom of Zebros. Um, uh, knowing that the kingdom of Zebros is a non-slave uh, state, um, and knowing that slaves do not exist in this, thing, in this country, um, where they have been outlawed by the government, uh, makes this whole... Um, this whole uh, series of events very, very uh, unfortunate and very, very uh, disturbing that these are that these events are happening. Um, having chartered the ship, uh, they or having uh, boarded the ship, uh, the Flying Sphinx, I believe, is what it's called. Um, gilded. Yep. Really name it the Gilded? Nope. Flying Sphinx was what I called it. You did. I did call it the Flying Sphinx, not the Gilded oh. Sphinx. That was what you guys came up with. Flying Sphinx. Um, was what, uh, after boarding that ship, they proceeded, uh, to, began to proceed down the river of Loudwater, um, where about halfway through their first, uh, or after their first day of travel, um, or actually into their first day of travel, uh, they, uh, they were set upon by what sounded to be not basically a chorus of siren vo voices, um, emanating from the forest, which then proceeded to um, beach uh, the Flying Sphinx uh, and uh, it ended up uh, leading the party um, and a bunch of the crew and some of the crew into uh, the forest where they uh, attacked and fought a shambling mound um, which was attempting to grasp and hold on to the end uh, two of the crews uh, through a series of events and through the battle uh, Tyrion was able to save one of the crew um, Make sure I know who you saved. Cause you were, I'm awesome. You were, you were able to save uh, John. Is who is the guy you were able to save? Um, deckhand John. However, unfortunately, the deckhand Landon um, was uh, lost due to the party attacking the Shambling Mound and the Shambling Mound dealing additional or um, allowing for some of that damage to go through. Um, Wasn't he like straight up vaporized? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Well, he was more like minced meated. 
Oh. Kind of what ended up happening. Um, Lovely. It was relatively interest uh, due to Clarissa, through Clarissa, um, summoning a cloud of daggers basically around her and basically just lawn mowing this thing down to the ground. Um, the Shambling Mound uh, was defeated. Unfortunately, uh, John was killed, or not John, Landon was killed in the process. Um, after defeating the Shambling Mound farther in, just a little beyond where they had fought him, there was a tree uh, where. Tyrion was able to have, uh, where he was able to swear his oath to his god, uh, Rilifane Relithil, um, and was uh, was granted and gifted a shield uh, that was made from the same bark and the same wood of the tree, um, ha being intricately dis uh, burned, uh, what looks like wood burning of... Um, of animals and creatures all along the shield, but all while still maintaining uh, the the image of um, Rothil, which is a uh, large tree um, and an oak tree uh, for for that in and of itself. Um, returning to the ship, they began uh, proceeding, continuing their trek down the Loud River or the Loudwater River. Um, going into uh, a very, very thick fog into an area known as the High Moor, which is a very foggy, um, wet, boggish, swampish country land um, that it is known to the party that this was a spell that the elves, before um, Zebros was a country, uh, crafted and created um, to keep... Uh, other species and other individuals from venturing into their realm um, out of a out of a attempt for peace uh, between races. Um, uh, they uh, through throughout some RP, Clarissa attempted to um, Clarissa attempted to uh, seduce uh, the captain, uh, only to find out that the captain uh, is not interested in her as a woman, um, and is more interested in men, and uh, those who have masts of their own, um, was uh, she then tried to not so subtly seduce uh, one of the deckhands, and the deckhand taking a cue from Captain Alver, uh, a fellow gnome, of, a fellow gnome, um, proceeded to take Larissa down to the, to the cargo hold of the Flying Sphinx, and had her placed in chains, um, in order to keep her from making any more trouble. Yeah, not uh, the kind of chains she was looking for. Not the kind of chains, nor the, probably the uh, anything else she was really looking for. Um, proceeding from there, uh, the party, mainly Tyrion, did not take very kindly to this, and um, after uh, three hours, kind of uh, finally wondered where she was at. Uh, Clarissa letting off a fanfare at, uh, at about the three-hour mark. Um... Uh, alerted pretty much the entire boat that she was down there, um, as well as uh, as well as anything else that might be out in the fog, um, and anyone else to the boats uh, to this barges basically position. Um, needless to say, that did not go over well with Captain Alver. He has uh, the relations between himself, Clarissa, and through that, relatively the rest of the party um, has not uh, has has become strained to say the least. Um, Captain Alvor eventually, uh, through uh, talks and persuasion, was able to uh, be reconciled via Bria, or Brea, um, that uh, Clarissa just being confined to her quarters for the remainder of their voyage. Um, the party is wanting to stop off at the library, the Shalal, um, and name again, the, <laughs> this is why I have this up, uh, the, Shal the Shala Isari Library, um, on their way down, for it is a known resting place of the Najaran Snakes, and uh, currently the fog has enveloped the boat um, so much that they can barely see 50 feet in front of them, and this is where we have left off, uh, and where we pick up this afternoon, or this evening, uh, within the country of Zebros. Well, you're not technically wrong, it's afternoon. Technically it's afternoon. This is where we pick off, or pick up from. Okay. <clears throat> As you guys have been talking and uh, going over all of all of these, uh, trying to get Clarissa released, um, 
Captain Alvarez has seemed uh, is seeming very very adamant that Clarissa may remain in her in her uh, in her chambers and or in her quarters until the remain until the end of the uh, until the end of the voyage. Um, Breo comes up and tells you that he that um, Captain Alvarez is willing to let her out for. Uh, to explore the library, but when she's back on the boat, she is to remain confined to her quarters. Brea walks off and continues uh, talking and uh, discussing the day's events with uh, Captain Albers. Uh, have you guys begun relaying this plan, and what is your guys' intent? No, we already... Uh, Karma already told her. Okay. Through the door. I missed that part then in the... Is that right? I uh, technically, so. I hadn't gotten. I don't. I don't think I've oh, seen okay. anybody talk to Clarissa. I've been. Yet I've been meeting. following it in chat. So if we just want to say that happened to save time, I'm good with yeah. that. Cool. It, the, we'll go with my, that. my general plan was to talk with the captain, see if I could get her some amnesty. But then, obviously, it didn't work out with a disadvantage roll. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you attempted. Didn't work out too well. Yep. Um. So through the door, you're able to tell Clarissa relatively what's happening. She's been spending her time tinkering on a little boat um, that would give the captain, in her words, a nice surprise the next time he uh, manages to look in his room. Um, knowing gnomes, really, that can mean anything. Um, so as you guys are uh, talking, um, as you guys are talking to Clarissa, I need. Um, who is talking to Clarissa? Where are the rest of you guys hanging out on the boat? I believe Riven's yeah. on deck watching the fog, and then Tyrion and I are downstairs. All right, so yeah, right. I'm with Karma. Okay, so the way that the boat is actually laid out, it's like one very flat deck. There's two raised platforms. Um, there is a there's a small staircase that leads, like kind of like ladder almost, that leads down into the cargo hold in the middle of the boat. Um, underneath the back platform, there is that is the captain's quarters. That is where they. Uh, that is where the, um, that is where basic that is where uh, Clarissa is currently being being held. It's a very simple boat, but not nothing ridiculously crazy. Um, it, that's where Clarissa is currently being is being at or it is, uh, and then on at the very front of the deck there or boat there is a, another raised uh, portion of the deck that leads um, to where Tyrion, you and uh, Brea had your discussion. For the sake of where we're going, so, um, Riven, you're watching on deck, is that correct? Yeah. Riven, I need you to make a perception check. Twenty-two. All right. Ooh. Very nice. Um, yeah, very good. All right, so, Riven, um, as you are, uh, watching and I'm trying to see who, I have to now read, read, determine who everybody is, so this will be interesting. Vanguard, I'm going to say you're sleeping as yeah. reasons, as you probably are. Um, I have to relearn who everyone is, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, this one's Riven. Riven, you're basically up here watching the mist. Always see our trees. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm placing you guys where I think oh, okay. you're going to be uh -huh. at. The way you said it, Nick, it sounds like... I think that's... Salix, where are you at? What are you doing? I'm on the deck. What are you, are you just watching the mist? Or are you talking to people? What are you yeah, doing? I guess I'm just watching the mist. So Salix also make a perception roll as well. It does not have a shipment of wheels on board. Oh, I thought we decided there was at least one last week. <laughs> okay, well. I, we might have. I don't really know if that might. Alright, so Clarissa, you are currently not seeable. Alright. For the sake of this, I will pull us... Okay, so um, as you guys are proceeding in through this fog, um, Salix and... Uh, Salix and Riven, you guys... Swear that out at the edges of your vision and through this fog, which is very, very difficult to see at this point, um, is uh, you see shadows. You see a few fleeting shadows, but by the time your your eyes can adjust and kind of look around, they're already gone. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So everyone who is on deck, I need you guys to make um, a dexterity uh, Dexterity saving throw. Oh, already? Yeah. Already. Bring it on! Oh god. <laughs> but wait, Tyrion and I aren't on deck, right? Nope, you guys are still no. on deck. 
We're back here. You're back okay. here. You're cut. You're cut. You have three quarters cover, so you would be or over half cover, so you'd be making the um, the roll with advantage. Oh, well, okay. at least one of us made it. All right. Oh so, wait, so we also have to make the dex. No, you so guys. Uh, no, you guys are not. You guys are not. No, you guys are not. Okay. Um, Riven, I'm had you. Where are you at? I thought I was in the front of the boat. That. That's the back of the boat. That is the back. That's where the mast is. Vanguard's up at the front. So Thangart, uh, so Thangart, Salix, and Riven make dexterity saving throws. Right. So as you are watching and as you're seeing these, um, as you're as you're seeing these, uh, as as you're seeing these shadows, like I swear you see these shadows, you all of a sudden hear, uh, Riven, you hear the you you clearly hear the um, the the twang of an arrow, and um, right at and as you hear that you're able to dodge very quickly out of the way um, from an arrow that goes and embeds itself right where your um, right where your feet were uh, standing not but a moment before uh, everything else uh, so which quick? one's Riven just so I can get used to the characters again yeah I have to get used One to him too in the electric hands. he's in back he's uh, up by Albers and um, oh okay nope that's the wrong book that's the wrong book Nathan good job and is this Vanguard that is Thangard, yes. Okay, and that's going to be Tyrion. Yep. Or no, wait, wait that's, no, that's Salix. That's Salix. That's, nope, that's Salix. That's Tyrion. Uh, I'm Tyrion the one is... right next to you, dude. Tyrion is... Yep, there you go. Good All right. So, uh, let's see here. All right, so. Um, and we're at... So... Riven, you're able to dodge quickly out of the way. Karma, you're able to. Uh, you hear it. You you look off to your side and you see a bunch. Uh, you see three more arrows go foom 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 right into the deck. Um, let's see here. Thangart, uh, Thangart, you are currently napping, um, so this doesn't really affect. So, so, so it affects you. It affects you, but you are currently um, you are currently very oblivious to the fact of anything is going on at the moment. Uh, Salix, you take uh, five points of piercing damage. Sweet. Um, Love damage. As an as an arrow, as an as an arrow goes, foomp, and uh, is able and grazes just past your side. Um, uh, what do you guys do? You guys so do who's on, who's under deck or below deck right now? No one's below deck at the moment. Okay. Apart from nope, no one's below deck. I lied. I'm snoring right now, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to yell, recast the, the Matergy and yell really loud. All right. That it's the... We're under attack. It's the snakes. <clears throat> All right. You, as, you, as, you, uh, as you yell this out, um, as you yell this out, uh, you hear him pretty much yell that out. What else are you guys doing? Um, we're still in the fog, right? You're still in the fog. Oh, uh, then I'm definitely going to stealth. There are arrows raining down on top of you. Then I am going to stealth... All right. There's no sort of cover that we can get underneath. There's barrels if you guys want to try and. Um... I can stealth in the fog, so that's yeah, what I'm doing. All right. Um... Do I need to roll for that, or am I just? No. No, you're fine. Can we tell which side of the river that the arrows are coming from? Um, or both. Make a perception. Make a perception check. Let's see. Jesus. Perception. At this point, another three arrows. Um, another three arrows come raining down onto you. Uh, Riven, uh, how does a uh, fourteen versus armor class do? Not even close. The fuck is your armor class? Dexterity, man. Jesus Christ, dude. He's a monk. I forgot your dex. I forgot. What there is a below really dex. On, yeah, there definitely is a below dex on this. Yeah, battle. there's a below deck. <laughs> Guys, why don't we just go below deck? Yep. They're shooting arrows at us. You're, you're, because <clears throat> then we could be boarded. Well, yep. then they'd have to come right, so fight us below deck. You don't have the that. advantage. Uh, Riven, another arrow just goes funk, funk. Uh, another two of them just go right down there. Uh, this guy, uh, John, takes a whopping six points of piercing damage. Dude, I, I just got done saving you, man. Should we get that? Uh, Karma's well, gonna dash below decks and say, "Let's yeah, fight let's them get, down." All right. Let's get the so, oh. All right, so 
Karma, you uh, you begin moving towards the uh, towards the middle of the boat, which is right here, which is where the um, I don't know if you guys saw that, uh, which will be right about here. Did you guys be right about did, there? Did Zalix's perception check do anything for the arrow check? Which one? Did, how much did you roll? Seventeen. Uh, there are arrows. Uh, you look around. Uh, you see arrows coming down from both the left and the right side, from both port and starboard. Port and starboard, thank yep, you. There are both, uh, they are, there are arrows coming from both directions at that point. Okay. Um, Karma, with your, with your, with your, uh, with your agility, you're able to get there. Um, are you climbing down or are you just dropping down? What are you doing? Yeah, I'm just gonna jump down. All right, you drop down. All right. Make, All right. An, ac make an acrobatics check real quick. As you drop down. Uh, disadvantage. Yeah. Ooh, actually pretty Wait, good. did you just ask for disadvantage? Yeah, I'm playing my character. There's um, a reason. 16. Sadist. Okay. Yep, you're able to, uh, you land, uh, it's a little clumsier than you're, than you're wanting to, but you still land, you get, you get below deck. Um, you're this one. Yep. No, not you. Um, right, so you, you're considered below deck now. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, Captain Albert is going to stay at the, um, he's going to stay at the wheel. Uh, I'm gonna stay above decks because I'm stealth, so I'm gonna keep an um, eye out. John is going to uh, is going to take his longbow out from where it's standing next to him and fucking rolls a natural one, of course. No, uh, Jesus so he's, Christ! Uh, loads, loads an arrow, boom, just fires it off in the mist. Nowhere near, um, nowhere near anything going on. Vanguard, you're still sleeping. I was gonna say, I was expecting him um, to like shoot himself in the foot or something. Um, the, no, we're good. We're good with no damage uh, to the guy. I don't feel like saving again. We're, we're uh, Bet, Bede, uh also uh, is going to pull out a longbow uh, from the barrel uh, from by his side. Loads an arrow, fires. Uh, it goes off into the fog. Yep. At this point, Clarissa is going to use a message to start blathering in Tyrion's ear. What's happening? Um, What's all that noise? Let me Alver, out of here. Alvar uh, is going to continue steering the boat um, and try and get it. Uh, try and start maneuvering it away. Um, uh, Brea is going to move uh, down here behind um, some of these uh, barrels, crouch crouching down, um, trying to just get uh, into cover. And these other two are also going to make attacks. Oh shit! Okay. All right. All right. So, so bolts go flying off uh, from uh, the other side of the boat. Uh, farther, farther, farther. Uh, off into this, off into the uh, fog, um, off into the fog. Uh, right. Um, okay. Um, so John is going to uh, end up. John is going to end up taking six points of piercing damage. Um, arrow. Penetrates into his uh, abdomen and he falls back, uh, prone. The deck as well. Um, what are the rest of you guys doing? No, uh, okay. Some above deck. Some okay. I need to. <clears throat> so can I tell the deckhand to go get Clarissa and still like remain hidden? I, if I just like whisper it to him, or what am I doing um, here? Um, you're currently down below. No, I am not. I never went down below. No, I mean like you're like farther down on the um you're down you're down you're like on a you're like down below the ledge of where this of where the top deck hand is at like where you're standing and where the wheel is at is like up like about five feet. Mm. Like there's a raised platform at the very back of the ship. Did I wake up yet? Uh, no one's waking you up. You're still just napping along. I yelled at him. We did yell at him with oh, the okay. really loud magic so voice. So make a. Uh, yeah, we'll say that you wake up from that. That's fine. You wake up. You you come to consciousness and go like, huh, huh, right as an arrow, boom, uh, lands, uh, lands, uh, embedding it, um, lands right in between your legs. Uh, stand up, and you are surrounded by fog. Point. So these stairs, are these like... They're barrels. You can, if you crouch down, like I mean, you you just standing behind one will give you more than three quarters cover. Behind me, are those? Is that cover too, or do or do those go downward? 
Uh, the stairs. Um, the stairs are behind. Would be off to your. Have to be gone. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, they go down to the main deck that everyone is currently standing on. Yeah, I'm just gonna have my shield up. All right, okay, I'm gonna whisper soon. back to Clarissa since we have the message thing that she needs to start yelling for someone to come let her out. All right. Like that. <laughs> as, as at that moment, you hear a giant. <laughs> Echoing from the fog, um, a about about that's their surrender noise, right? <laughs> about a minute later, you hear another one farther off. Uh, you hear the same. It's farther off. Um, well, they know we were coming. Another another minute later, you hear the same thing. The arrows subside and stop, um, firing down. Uh, um, the uh, but whoever was firing at you um, was, is now very aware of your presence and that you are proceeding forward towards, um, or at least heading in this direction. Well, uh, we should probably go with our current plan and uh, but without any of the caution or stealth we were planning before. So, this well, is are our... we even near where we need to be right now? Well, uh, when we get there, we can still do this. I agree. No, I'm, I'm just saying I think that, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're not at, there yet. At that point, uh, at that point... Um, we still need to let the gnome out. Yep. At that point, Brady yeah, please. Brady turns to John, or Brady turns to Captain Alvar and says, Scouts, Captain, must... They, they now know that we're... They, we know, they now know we're on our way. And Alvar's just kind of lets a slight nod and says, Agreed. We're going to have to... If you if you want if you're set on stopping at this library, we're going to have to either proceed past, or you're going to have to disembark ship as we meet you farther down uh, down river. That's exactly the plan. That that is the plan now. Yes, we were the captain was originally just going to anchor, but I think if he anchors once he's like out of danger, we can meet him down river. Yeah. All right. So uh, Albert says, "Well, we're about to." Uh, we're about two miles from, by by best guesstimate, we're about two miles from where the the Shala Asari Asari Library is. Um, Asari Library is. Uh, if you, I can pull you closer to the shore, uh, but you're gonna have to, uh, you're going to have to make your land, make your make your way off um, without us stopping. I can slow us down a bit, but we're not gonna be stopping. Otherwise, they'll know that you're on. They'll know that you're disembarking. On your way. That's fine. Yeah, bring it. All right. Can we please get the gnome out of here? Yes, yes, yes. Your gnome can go with you. There she's off my ship. Um. All right. He all right. begins maneuvering you guys over towards the shoreline. Um. I uh, the out of the fog, out of the fog comes the shoreline. It's uh, um, it is off to the star. I believe starboard side, whatever, right side. Right side. side. Yep, I was right. Starboard. Huzzah! I was correct. <laughs> uh, off to the starboard side, he begins maneuvering you. Um, he gets close enough that uh, the that the ship begins to, that the barge begins to slow down. Uh, you see uh, John and uh, Joan using the poles um, at the front of the ship to begin slow, to continue slowing the ship, but at least still kind of kind of almost uh, Italian style, moving it along. Um, so completely uh, disorganized. Well, it's, he's moving. The, he's uh, they are moving it over towards the shoreline, and they're just slowing down the ship. But it's not. Um, it is not not coming to a full stop. Um, Freya, at this point, um, heads off to the starboard side and looks down at the water and says, "Shall we?" And jumps off into shallow water. All right, I'm gonna uh, turn to the captain before I go anywhere and say. You know, we're off here. Proceed as slowly as you can while still remaining safe. And I'm going to grab a rope and shimmy down or however Freya, we're getting off this thing. Freya lands in the water, splashes down um, uh, in her boot, uh, in her travel gear, um, and begins making her way towards, uh, what, uh, she, uh, towards the shoreline. All right. Tyrion, so, uh, you are also getting off as well. Crime is getting off as well. Can uh, hey, look. Sailor speak to Clarissa? It's like... Would you like a ride? Clarissa is Clarissa has been let out uh, 
one of the uh, Brady had uh, flicked the key toward um, uh, toward you, and uh, the door was opened, and Clarissa was allowed out. Um, was allowed out of the of the main door, or was allowed out of her cabin as uh, Brea is jumping. Brea and um, Tyrion are jumping off of the. Ah, yes, much appreciated, cleric. Uh, I suppose I shall just ride on your shoulders. Down we go. All right, you guys jump off. Uh, <laughs> uh, go ahead and make a... Uh, all right, fantastic. All right, progressing right along. About um, 30 minutes into your... Then, uh, yeah, say, Thangar, you better jump off, too. <laughs> Um, uh, as you as you get to the shoreline, uh, you realize that it's not very much. It's not really a shore. Um, it, it's more of there's a slight area of what appears to be semi sturdy land, um, but it is uh, it is very very it is it is still very very wet, um, very wet land this area. You do you begin. Um, continuing, as you begin walking forward, you realize very quickly that you are walking through a marsh. It is, um, it is very, uh, kind of disconcerting. Your, your socks are getting wet. Like, everything of your, like, up to your waist, up, up to your waist is getting wet at, at points in time. Um, as you, uh, as you guys continue, uh, make a perception check, all who are wanting Sure. A perception check? Perception check, <clears throat> yes. Ugh. Oh, that's ugly. Alright, uh, as you're, um, as you're wandering, as you're wandering through this fog, or, that, uh, through this bog, basically, um... Well, fuck you guys. <laughs> As you're, your as, double as, digit as you're wandering roll. through this, as you're wandering through this bog, um, uh, Clarissa, you and Clarissa, you and Salix are able to hear um, a slight uh, creaking of trees, and it's coming specifically from behind you guys. It's, uh, uh, it sounds as though it'll creak for a moment, and almost as though like a, almost as though an animal is jumping from branch to branch branch. Uh, Clarissa is going to discreetly use message to relay the, this to Tyrion and say uh, don't act unnaturally or freak out, but there is something following us in the trees. Alright, I'm going to stealth since we're like in trees. Or attempt to stealth anyway. We're in the forest, right? Like, I mean, we're... You're in a swamp, basically. In a swamp? Um, is, eh, that's is... a natural thing. It's it is, pretty it much is as long as I'm in nature, right? Yeah, let, me, it, let me look at I that. I believe so, yeah. It is a very, very, very... It's a natural it's phenomenon. Fun. That's all I need. Picture. Picture it. Can Salix get the... Uh, Vanguard's and Karma's and Riven's attention and point behind us? So and as you point... Up and behind us? Yep. I'm just gonna, point. while stealth, like sort of slow down and let the group pass me a little bit. Alright. Karma wants to go stealth as well now that he's been alerted to it. Alright. Go ahead. Roll your stealth checks. <clears throat> now, oh, I put that on I'm the unclear on this Mask of the Wild thing. It says I can attempt to hide. Does that mean I get advantage on the roll? It's kind of vague. Let's check real quick. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing in it about it. I just, I feel like Anyone can attempt to hide anywhere. Um, you can attempt to hide. Uh, it would basically just be a stealth check with advantage, basically. All right. Oh well. damn, Vanguard. Well, that's good. That's better. Uh, what am I stealth? Oh wait, really? Oh, it's a Dex thing. I don't know why I thought it was something else. Yeah, stealth is. Yeah, it's a dex thing. Okay, I'm... 
Okay, so Ryben... Uh, so this is the first stealth check I haven't failed miserably on, so just... Okay. <laughs> so, Tyrion, you're able to, uh, using your Wood Elf nature, or Wood Elf senses and your Wood Elf um, background, you're able to kind of, like, like as you're walking, you dart behind a tree, and then all of a sudden you're just not there. You, It's it's quite disconcerting for a few of you, um, as, you've, as a Wood Elf paladin, which is carrying a lot of like, which is carrying, like, armor and, um, and, uh, different swords and different things like that, is able just to kind of disappear into, um, basically nothing, which is, uh, quite impressive. I like that. Try that again. Sorry, I'm trying. Technical difficulties are not quite the way I want them. Hmm. Anyways, so as you're progressing through the forest, um. Uh, you eventually uh, come to, um, you eventually, uh, the trees begin to thin. Uh, there's, wait, you, as you're walking, as you're continuing to walk through, um, you look behind you and there's nothing there. You you occasionally can, you ca occasionally hear the same creaking sound, but um, nothing uh, seems to come of it. Whatever entity or whatever is going, coming behind you, um, uh, or is behind you is uh, seems to just be keeping its distance, not really, continue, not really continuing to progress much forward, but just still being behind you. Um, eventually, you guys come across a across a why uh, across where a place where the trees begin to fade and to just a very kind of typical swamp area. Um, there's a slight hill. Uh, that there's a slight hill that begins to crest and um, as, and as you are beginning to walk up the hill, a slight breeze comes and just gently pushes some of the some of the fog away. Um, as you're walking, looking over the hill, you see what appears to be tall, very tall over 30, 40 feet tall um, individuals standing um, with their backs facing towards you. Oh, God. Uh, they appear to be... Uh, they appear to have very long hair, wearing long robes, um, long decorative robes. Um, from, from your vantage point, you can only really make out their upper back. Um, and you see uh, three of them, um, and they appear to be holding hands. Um... They appear to be holding hands. Uh, if you want to make a perception check, you can. Nice. Uh, oh, God. Uh, all right. So, Tyrion, um, you uh, and Riven, using your elven sights um, and what you, uh, you... Tyrion using your elven sight and Riven um, using your... Uh, Approximately uh, half of it. Uh, approximately half Elven Sight as well. Um, Salix is able to just fucking looks up and is like, uh, and just with his quick glance, he's able to recognize that these individuals and beings are not moving. They are standing very, very still. Um, they appear to be gray and um, stand and just very, very still. Um, as you guys crest the top of the hill, you're able to see a, a cylindrical building, just as the fog is beginning to come back in and obscure it. Um, you're able to see a cylindrical building. Uh, at the top, there are there is a there is uh, about t uh, 10 to 12 of these tall almost elven in nature, or actually they are elven in nature, 
um, individual beings standing atop of this structure, holding hands um, in a circle at the very top, uh, forming the very top uh, rim of um, of the building itself. Um, as you are looking at this from the top of the hill down onto this area, you a flicker of m movement catches your eye, and you see um, two shapes uh, emerge from the fog as they are walking um, around the around the um, around the building itself. They're walking around the building. They're walking around the around the building. They are large, um, larger humanoid beings. They are uh, they they are uh, they appear to be wearing not but a loincloth. Um, but uh, oh. before the fog obscures them, they are larger than any. They're larger than beings that you've seen in the past. Um, they're about comparable to the size of the oni that you. Um, that you had encountered earlier. Well, I your, thought that guy travels. was very pleasant. So, so um, they are about that. They're they're about that. They're about that tall. Uh, they are fairly large. They are. Uh, you see one kind of heft its uh, heft its um, club that's carrying onto its back as it continues to walk around, uh, walk around the uh, walk around the uh, around the building itself. Well, I suppose this would be the library. Um, and the they are being they... very quiet. Clarissa, turning around, you you glance over your shoulder as you hear a noise, and as you look back towards the forested area, you swear for an instant you see an elven female staring out at you um, before she flits away back into the forest. Hmm. Huh? What the... Uh... Oh, that was, uh, oh, I, I think I saw an elf following us. Uh, Tyrion, it would be of the variety you would be interested in, meaning female. Correct. <laughs> Jesus. That I'm not correct. Sure, I'm not sure, though, she was there for just a minute, and, then she came, and I can't seem to find her again. Well, I'm a little further back, so can I try and spot this elf lady now that I know she's there? Let me um, try and, yeah, me go try ahead and, and scope her out. Roll ahead and, go ahead and roll a perception check. <clears throat> oh god, it's not going to be as good as my last one. It's not! Six! Wait. <laughs> um, Six. Looking back into the woods, you... See uh, woods? <laughs> looking back into the woods, you, you, you see woods, you see the bog, and you're just like, oh... There's not, there appears to be nothing behind you. God damn it. Um, the first time an elf lady shows up and I roll a fucking four. This was my moment. Um, right. yeah. Good karma check, too. Uh, if you would like to, uh, since she has stated. Huh. Hey, Darren, we have something in common. Four. Uh, so, mm. uh, looking back, uh, you, mm. you don't see anything. Brea... Uh, seems to not really notice or really take heed of the question, um, but uh, she uh, is looking down towards the towards the structure itself. So, for the sake of this, um, and you guys are at the top of a hill at this moment in time. Um, you're looking down into this area. Brea point, looks down and points off just across one of the the small streams that is going across um, this boggy area and says, one of the scouts is down there. He's pacing slowly, but if you... One of our stealthier members could get up there and... take him out, this might work in our advantage. Alright, well, I'm... I'll take a stealth, stab at it. So, I'm gonna... Oh, it's yeah, funny. I don't know if I'm gonna try oh, to stab. Um, so I'm pretty stealth right now, too. I'm just gonna... Move is over behind him. No, I think that's. Nope. The, whoa! That what is, the fuck is going on is, down those there? Those are those are the two. Those are the two individual, or that's one of the big giant humanoid things that you see, this um, is... going around. That's one. That's the scout that she's pointing out. Don't move there yet. Ooh, okay. Okay. 
Otherwise, if you do, you will invoke it at attack of opportunity. I thought, I thought you were going to What? How? I'm stealth. Okay. The, uh, I'm just putting this up for just visual. Uh, visual oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. So, just trying to... Okay, so... All right, so yeah, that giant thing is the is one of the individual is one of the giant humanoid individuals that you saw as you were um, as you were pro as you guys as the music pressed forward. No, there should not be music playing at the moment, guys. I'm trying to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, so, I hear music. Uh, I have my music playing, but it, yeah, I don't think you guys should be hearing it. Okay. I hear the march of the faithful. <laughs> Goblin's Cave we're playing on my jukebox, apparently. I don't know Goblin's why. Cave should now be... Uh, March of the Faithful should not be, but Goblin's Cave should be playing. Okay. Okay, so what are you guys doing for this? Well, I'm gonna uh, oh, sneak I up can... on this guy. Alright. Um, sh okay, okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm like, already stealthed. I'm so hidden I, in Karma's, nature. Karma's stealth too, and I get okay, massive that's... amounts of damage on a sneak attack. I would say let you... him go. Well, I'm not really communicating with any of you because I'm none of you trying are able to stay to hidden. Any of this, so, so I'm just um, gonna sneak up on the guy. All right, so Tyrion, you sneak up. You sneak up to the individual. Uh, you're gonna take. You're able to get to. I'm like behind him. Wrong person. Yep. All right. I'd like, to get to, I'd like to follow closely behind him. Okay. You're able to get probably about there. I'm um, going that way. I'll flank where? and I'll go this way. Probably where you about moved. No. Um. All right, so Tyrion, you're able to get up behind him. So, uh, are you? What are you? You're, you're going to attack him, I take it. Um. Or what are you doing? Well, let's see. Bray identified this guy as a scout. Mm -hmm. Drop him. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna just try and knock him out. All right, so you're just gonna try and knock him out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just, I mean, I'm right behind him. What is he? What's he? What kind of armor are we looking at here? Um, go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, um, or roll, as soon roll as, your attack, see if she does, to see if it works. As soon as Karma sees him doing that, I'm going to throw both my daggers. Dagger, dagger. At him? <laughs> yes. Well, not, not, right. at, not at Tyrion, at the, at the guard. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Good. Maybe, though, I hope you aim dagger, well. Dagger, dagger, dagger. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Alright, so Tyrion, what's your roll? Um, well, this would be, I, I'm just going to try and, like, Bash him in the back of the head with the hilt of yeah, my sword. You're doing, so would you're that doing be unarmed non, or? It, it's like you can basically use the backside. Of, you can either use your shield. You could use the backside of your sword. Like it's it's non-lethal damage is what it would be. Right. So is that just a straight D twenty to It'd hit? D twenty plus your strength, like whatever, you're, like plus your strength okay, plus strength. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, five. So. So there you go. As as you as you as you come back and. Are getting ready to strike him. The 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 individual who you now see is uh, clad in kind of just a green cloak. Um, has has an arrow out at him. Turns around, and goes ha ah, ah, ha, and then as soon as that happens, um, you you th uh, thrust forward with the palm of your um, with the palm of your uh, sword. Um, he's able to dodge out of the way. He he's managed to grab. He manages to kind of like settle in on you and just out of the dark. Karma, go ahead and roll your uh, two attacks. Uh, the first one was 17. Okay. 7 1 was, uh, wow, that's going to hit. That's a 18 plus 4, 24. Yep, 22. Both hit. Yep, both hit. Roll your damage. Um, I'd like to go for non, non lethal if I can, but yeah. I'm throwing daggers, daggers? That's not really You possible. threw daggers yeah. at him. There's yeah. not really a way to not do non lethal with that. That's so true. you threw daggers at him. They're flying and they're going end over end at this point. Um, uh, they're both going to hit, so. Go uh, ahead and roll your damage. Sneak attack or not? Nah? It's going to be sneak attack. He is in a <laughs> dense fog and has no idea where you're at. Okay. What does? Rip, so let's see. Times two, 24. Yeah, this guy's about to have a real bad day. Yep. Uh, as as soon as he is able to like kind of gain his footing <clears throat> and kind of look at him, foo, 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 funk! Right through the neck goes one at your dagger, and then the second dagger goes, embeds into his chest, and he crumples to the ground. Absolutely dead. Not just a little dead. <laughs> Absolutely dead. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, not just a little dead. He's dead. <laughs> All right. All right. 
I want to go and retrieve my daggers right after that. Yep, go ahead. You move up. You're, you're able to move up and retrieve them. Um, not if I grab them first. I'm not doing that. All right, just, just let us see what's these. All right. As, what <laughs> are the rest of you Hey, guys. I mean, hey, guys. Do you see the other ones sneaking up on us? You, yep. All uh, right. So as, um, as that is happening, uh, there are... Uh, you, uh, Salix, you're able to see other uh, shadows moving out throughout the um, moving through the fog area. You, at this point, take the clue that there's probably some other individuals out there, unaware that you that might might be or might be aware of your uh, presence at this point. This one is going to move up this way. Going to continue to move here. All right. All right. What else are you guys doing? Looking for a murder door. Can <laughs> Clarissa see any? Of, I mean, she can obviously see the big guys, I guess. But can she see any of these these guys? Like the big guys appear to be like continuing to like move in and out of the fog. Like there's like there'll be occasionally like where they are obscured, and other times when they are not obscured. Okay. They like you still you get the sense that you know generally where they're at, but um, uh, it's. Not quite. Uh, so maybe you really are able to fully, fully see them. Well, I'm gonna pull my shield out. Okay. I moved, and I'm gonna continue being stealth over here and keep an eye on those two in front of me. All right. Um, can I move Good. back into like the river area? Try yep, and stealth in there. Yep, you can try. Nice. Twenty-one, two, twenty-two. So I can't hit anyone, but I can hide real well tonight, guys, so... Yep. Yep, uh, you're, you you kind of, like, sink into the water, like, your entire body, like, it's pretty much covered up to your neck. Uh, you're pretty much able to, like, like, you're able to, like, kind of, like, you're gonna be kind of, kind of, almost, like, crawling a little bit through some of this very disgusting, bad-smelling bog water. Um, mm. uh, is, is this a tree, is, right? Is this thing a tree right here? Um, it is a dead tree at this point, is that yes. Like okay. Karma would like to go right behind this tree and then stealth, and he's going to be looking back for that thing that's following us because right. I don't want to at deal with that. Which, at which point, um, at which point, uh, Karma, as you're stealthing, uh, looking off to your guy, looking off to your um, to your left hand side, you see an individual dart forward, um, and all of a sudden, after that, uh, I. The fog obscures them at that point. Alright, uh, how tall is this uh, dead tree here, Nathan? Um, it's about about three and a half feet tall. Okay. Right, never mind then. Well, actually, you know what? Why not? Clarissa is going to try to climb up on top of the tree to see if she can maybe get any better field of vision since she's athletics check. Oh lord! All right. Okay. Can I, can and I think I, athletics is dexterity, right? Yeah. Character. Yeah. Who's that other person? Okay. Thirteen. In campaign? Yeah. Who is on the? Don't worry about it. I'm okay. worried about it. <laughs> Pretty sure this is. What do you? What do you roll, Crossfire? Uh, thirteen. Uh. It'll take most of your movement to get up there. Um. This turn. Uh. So as you're you're kind of hauling yourself up there. Um. You managed to kind of get up on like the little edge, but uh, it's it's a little it's a little rough. <laughs> All right. She All right. likes it rough though. What right? else are you guys, I mean, what else you guys doing? This. Well, yeah. Yeah. Was I able to go stealth? Yeah, you're able to go stealth. Okay. Um, these gentlemen. Uh, let's see here. These guys up top. I still stealth. I didn't yeah, you're still okay. stealth. Yeah, okay. This where, one's gonna, where this one's going to progress over this way. This one's progressing over this way. This one's move. dead, right? That one is. That dead, one is yes. dead. Okay, I'm gonna just move through the bog. We can basically move to wherever we want at this point. Uh, not really, but just let me know where you're wanting to move. Oh, I'm wanting to move where I moved, if that's cool. Just so with near. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Um, as you. Uh, all right. This will be, this will be interesting. All right. So as you're um, 
as you are continuing to move, you hear in the distance a very, very loud, and then it's silenced. Well, that's not ominous. Um, followed by what you swear is some type of growl. Hmm. Animalish in nature. Um, we should probably try to get inside that building thingy. At which point, at which point, this guy is able to move up here. This one moves up here, in the direction of the sound that they just heard. Holy shit! All right. And let's see if they notice you guys. Okay. Um. All right. Ooh, hello. Someone's got an interesting mic going on. Hello? Yes. Have we got... All right. Mr. Swagger, can you hear us? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Uh -oh. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you control over your secondary creature here. Guys, I think I figured out who the person is. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I'm really perceptive. Ah, it's kind of crazy. All right, what are you? All right, uh, Riven, what are you doing? Uh, is, has this guy in front of me seen me yet? Uh, he has not seen you yet, but he is. Um, he is now a little bit more concerned about uh, hear about what just happened all on the other, all on the other side. And we heard the sound coming from. Oh, you south. heard it. Yeah, it's basically from your guys' south position right now. Okay. Closer down towards the Loudwater River. I'm gonna move up one space and just keep hunkered down there. And if he comes, right. can I can I do if he comes within like ten feet of me, move up and attack him? Yep, you can do that. Okay. All right. That's what I'm gonna uh, do. right. Salix, what are you doing? Mr. Salix. Salix. I'm on mute. I'm a scoot oh. here. <laughs> That's good. Moving up there. All right. Where are we now? About 20 feet. 30 feet around. Cast, uh... Can I reach here? Perfect. Okay, so this spot here. All right. I'm going to cast uh, the Matergy. Or is there a correct, correct pronunciation of that? Thr uh, thaumaturgy. 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 I'm going to cast th Thaumaturgy. Okay. And, uh, there's gonna be a. Uh, <clears throat> so, let's see, how about the. The, the cry of a, a bird right here. Alright. Alright, as you cast that, there's a. <coughs> that comes from behind the area. Whoa. Good lord. Whoa. Whose mic is that? That is. Jesus. Oh. Um, this guy turns around and, uh, Jesus. Okay. Uh, starts moving back in that direction. This one, um, uh, hears it and, uh, still continues to progress, um, in this direction at this point. Alright, Vanguard, what are you doing? Oh, Jesus Christ. Up at this dude. I think All it's right. Pharma because he keeps showing up as an active speaker, but he's not saying anything. Mm. Yeah, I think it's Whack Pharma him. too. Can you hear anything? I can hear you, but you're really crackly. Yeah, someone's up with your mic, man. Yep, I was at pull and put it back in. Sound effects, always 10 out of 10. <laughs> I tried. That's what she said. All right, so Thangar, are you moving up there? Are you attacking? What are you doing? I'm attacking him. All right, go ahead and roll. Oh, Go for attack. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. This progresses things a little faster here. Yeah. All right. So, as that happens, yep, that's much better. All right. So as you as you reel up and. Uh, bring your uh, axe down uh, and kind of go charging. You go, ah, and swing. He's able to, through, after hearing this giant yell coming at him, he's able to kind of dodge out of the way, uh, looks at you, and this is where we roll initiative. Okay. <laughs> Yay. 
So everyone, roll initiative. Be so kind. Oh. All right. Vanguard, hey, just crushing those rolls, man. <laughs> All right. Maybe you need to find a different thing to sleep on. I feel like if you <laughs> slept in an actual bed, you'd be Maybe a little more alert. Maybe if you got alert. real dice. It, it I think it's the computer 22? dice that just fucking hates you. The 22, Clarissa with the 18. Brea after that. Um, Tyrion after Brea. Yeah, I'm fine with uh, being behind her. <laughs> Karma. Nope, Thangard's next. Karma. And. Oh, I lied. I fucked that up. And. Meryl. Mar I fucking can't pronounce Elven names. He's. Oh, that. Meryl. Probably okay. just Emeril. 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 Whatever. Okay. So. Emeril. All right. So. All right. So, top of the rounds, we have. Would that be Riven? It'll be Riven, yes. All right. Riven is first up. Riven. Okay. That guy. And I'm not All right, on Riven. Woo! All right, you move up. He's currently still looking the opposite direction. Does not know that you're there. Uh, short sword swing. All right, go ahead and roll for attack. Oh god, definitely hit seventeen plus. Yep, that hits. So seventeen bunch a bunch plus a bunch. Yep. yep Always hits. nice to have a baseline. Hey, Less good. Eight. Yep. So as you as you rush up behind him using your kind of ninja skills, you're able to like silently silently get up behind him. You take your short sword, you swing straight across, uh, slicing uh, slicing slicing a nice sla uh, slash down the uh, diagonally across his back. -ah! He lets out um, he lets out a little scream as it goes. Are you? I'm gonna make my own arm attack then. Go for it. As you finish doing that, you you as you finish doing that, you reel back. You take your uh, you take your fist and aim uh, aim for uh, the kidney side. Aim for the kidney and the side. Uh, you realize you have him. one of those on each side, right? Yes. Aim for okay. one of the kidneys on his on his uh, left side. Foomp, right in there. And what's that roll? Twenty two. Yep, that hits. And how much damage? Inside. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as you as you impact you feel as you impact the pressure point you uh, feel the organ give way and it's like you're pretty sure you dealt some pretty solid damage there. Is um, he down? He's, he's looking pretty rough, but he's not down. He turns around and uh, now is fully aware of your presence, but you see some blood dribbling out of the side of his mouth and he looks like he's trying to stay standing. Uh, Clarissa, I'm over to you. Back off. Okay. Can I see this big guy right, right now? Uh, you're using the disengage, uh, uh, so... I, I just have it from being mobile. Anything I attack cannot take it. No, 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 That's he's not, no, 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 it's you. not that. It's more the fact, like, how much of your movement did you originally use? Uh, I was here, so 15. So you used 15. Let me double check something on your feet. Just to make sure I'm not fucking this up. Yeah, you're fine. I can look it up for you. Of course, I just quit out of hard copy. All right, mobile. Um, don't attack. You don't uh, provoke opportunity attacks from that creature for the rest of the turn. Oh, cool. Nope. Nice. Free okay. disengage. All right, I'm moving. So, basically, a free disengage. To the party. I'm gonna back off and move here. I think I'm still uh, moving. Right. Yeah, you should still be in your moment. Yes, right. 35 of my 50. Yep. All right. So, okay. This takes us to Clarissa. What are you doing? Can I see this guy right now? Uh, you see a shadow in that area, uh, but it's um, it's a little... You can kind of see a general outline, but you can't really quite make out any distinct um, any distinct features of them. All right. I yeah, want no. to try to use message at this thing and say... Uh, you can try. And say, uh, 
Oi, look at that big, ugly thing in front of me. Uh, you're so slow and stupid. Why don't you come back here and I'll show you who's really tough. So yeah, that's like behind you, you big oaf. All right. Um, the, uh, the mass appears to stop uh, where it stands. It turns around, sniffs in the air for a moment, and begins um, moving in your direction. God damn it. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? <laughs> All right. I thought I could get it to turn around and attack this idiot, but apparently not. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah you right. stay behind right. you. Good. Yeah, fair enough. All right, Brea is going to... Um, it's going to move. Move over here. Um, she is going to move there. Get there. Get to about there. Uh, she is then going to throw one of her daggers uh, that she has in there. Uh, the first, she chucks both daggers. Foom, foom. Uh, the first dagger goes spinning completely off in the wrong direction, and uh, the second uh, completely off in the wrong direction. Um, and kind of lands in the water, funk, uh, whereas the second dagger um, impacts and impacts this giant creature. All right, and deals some damage to that motherfucker. All right, um, the creature, the giant hulking creature, which uh, Clarissa, you can now see, has very green skin, long, lanky arms, um, teeth uh, that are kind of almost canine in uh, nature, um, and uh, its hair is just black and thick, uh, going down to about its um, going down to about its uh, shoulder shoulders. All right. Uh, this brings us to these guys. All right. So this guy up here is going to make an attack against you, Riven, because he knows where you're at now. Uh, unfortunately, it, he takes zero, goes, f fires, foomp, and uh, uh, flies right, pa flies past your, right past your, uh, flies right past you. Uh, unfortunately, missing. All uh, right. Uh, this gentleman, Angard, is going to have to find a wheel. It's going to attack. Shit. Uh, he's he's at disadvantage. He pulls out he pulls out an arrow from his back and tries to aim at you. And just since you're so close, boom! It just goes spinning off in the wrong direction. This one's gonna move this way as he begins to hear the scuffles. Um, this one is moving here, here, and Imara, Mara, Imaral, Imaral, Imaral. Sorry, thank you, Imaral. Uh, all right. Um, uh, seventeen to hit. Seventeen to hit. That will yep. be a hit. All right. You, you sunk my battleship. That's actually my AC, by the way. Uh, you take five points of piercing damage as the as the um, as uh, one of the guards brings his uh, sword up and slashes at this giant black panther that is currently in front of him, uh, it slashes across your slashes across your uh, your uh, right sh uh, the right upper shoulder. Awesome uh, down there. All right, uh, this brings us to uh, Tyrion. Okay. All right, let's see where I'm at. Who's that guy? Oh, no, I want a ruler. Let me see. Where? Oh, no, I don't want to move. Oh, sorry, hold on. Roll 20 is giving me 20, 30 feet. All right, this guy. All right, I'm going to sneak up over there. All right. And... So using the... Mask of the Wild. Yep, yep. Using the mask of the wild, you're able to uh, get up over to uh, the guard. He or the guy. He is unable to see you at this point in time, um, as you blend into your surroundings. Okay, so I'm gonna try and run him through with my shorts, with my long sword. Go for it. Uh, that is. Do I get advantage because I'm stealth? How does stealth work for normal people? Uh, yeah, you would get advantage on the attack roll okay. for being stealth. 
shouldn't need it, but... Mm. Okay, uh, 18, 19 to hit. 19 to hit. Yep, that'll hit. Okay. Where's my D8? There you are. Uh, okay. 7 and 10 and 2 is 12. All right. As you uh, as you sneak up behind him using the using the natural camouflage, you take your sword, you run it through the the, sw the small of his back. It sprouts out the front of his chest. He looks down and goes, uh, uh, and falls limply um, onto the uh, limp limp uh, 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 against your blade as you pull it straight out, um, allowing for his body to topple forward um, <laughs> into the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that guy is oh. thoroughly dead. All right. All right. All right, so this brings us to... I'm just going to move team. here with the last of my... Mural, you are currently down here. Okay. Uh, in panther mode. Perfect. I Holy will make shit. A, I will make a claw attack... At him. All right. Oh fuck, that's a three. <laughs> yeah, you uh, go up to swipe, funk, and the uh, the guard is able to kind of see seize your attack and is able to kind of dodge out of the way a little bit. I'm um, just just allowing for a fully miss. So. All right, this brings us to these gigantic ass things. These will be fun. All right. Wait, uh, as in they're large butts? No. Oh, thank God. That would be horrifying. That'd be horrible. They are hairy, though. All right. Ah. Uh, this one is going to continue to. This one is going to continue to make its way in the, uh, in the direction that he heard, um, slash, smelled, uh, something, um, and he's going to get to about here. Uh, <laughs> what happened? Uh, this one is going to move in the direction of the panther that it currently sees. Um, I'm just gonna get to about there. Oh, All right. <laughs> All right. So Clarissa. All right. So uh, Clarissa, let's uh, fifteen. So uh, I'm gonna use 20. my reaction to throw up a shield. By the way. Okay. So your reactions in in um in reaction to the to the to the uh, uh to the attack itself. Right. Yeah, so as he attacks, uh, it's going to be 17 to hit, which, yeah, that'll hit. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be uh, seven points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, of slashing damage. Sorry. That'll be... Nope, that's... Ten points of slashing damage. Sorry. Okay. Ten points of slashing damage as the... Uh, as uh, the giant claw of this, what you can now clearly see is a giant troll um, st uh, standing in front of you uh, uh, comes slashing down across your body. Um, the first, the first claw strikes you across the body, throwing it, and as you're uh, as you are reeling back, the second claw comes forward and is able to, and just misses your uh, just misses your torso from there. Um, this other one is going to attempt to make an attack to attack against you. So, uh, Emural as a panther, what is your, or what's your AC? 17. Okay, so that one misses. Misses as well. Um, uh, so Emural as the other troll, it sees your panther, you being a panther, able to kind of just, like, dot, like, quickly move out of the way as, uh, it's two claws are, um, two claws, uh, go to slash at you, and it's able to miss both of you. All right, this brings us to Thangart. He's asleep against a wheel somewhere, I'm Thanks. sure. Probably. Oh, so I was gonna bit for a while here. Sorry about that. I was gonna mention Shadow. Uh, after if my Panther form goes to nothing, I still have full health when I come out of it. Yeah. Yep, I know. I'm gonna okay. red. Wow. So thank you. You're attacking the same guy in front of you. Uh, that unfortunately, I believe, misses. Yep. So as you uh, also. Uh, feeling very enraged by the fact that you just missed your first attack. You reel back with your uh, axe again to try and slash at the guy. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, he also he he sees you telegraph the attack and your rage, and you are uh, 
and you are unfortunately uh you unfortunately miss him all right this brings us to karma all right so i am still stealth where i am correctly correct uh, where are you at i'm right well yeah. I, have to, I have to get reused to get you used i'm to by the dead tree Yes, you are still stealth at the moment. Okay, have... so then I'm going to uh, sneak attack dagger dagger on the troll motherfucker. All right, are you just all right? Are you uh, throwing him? Or are you just going to attack him? I'm within. Well, yeah, I'm just. I'm so just you're within melee. You're yeah. in melee. Within melee. Okay, that's work. So with my flame tongue dagger first, it is a let's see, plus four. That's sixteen. Uh, that will hit. Okay, so sneak attack, let's see, four, and then the flame tug itself. Sixteen. All right, as you're, all right. That's with go the first dagger. For, yep, go ahead and run for a second one. Okay. Sixteen, you said? Yes. Okay. Second one is seventeen. All right. And this one I get a whole whopping... Three, hit. three points of damage. All right. So as you uh, as you take your as you take your daggers, you flip them over in your hands. You grab them. You jump up and you take the flame ten dagger. You slam it into his side, slowly carving down, slowly carving down this really like at least seven, at least like ten foot tall beast. Slowly carving down his side. As you're coming down, you slam the other dagger into its into its uh, upper thigh. You pull off, uh, landing landing down on the ground. Um, he is now. Uh, he uh, rares, uh, rares in pain, looking down at you. Um, just sees, you see a little foam froth frothing at the mouth. All right. Yay! Brings us back up to Riven. What are you doing? Uh, this guy's still alive, right? Yes, that guy is still very much alive. All right, moving up to him. All right. Sword. All right, go for it. Seventeen. All right. Uh, yep, that'll hit. <laughs> seven. All right, all right, fantastic. My seven. Uh, you take you take your short sword. You slam it once again. Also in that same in that same uh, arc across the back, um, deal, like opening a very nice gash in his armor. It, uh, it, he goes Aah! and lets out a horrible scream as the blade sinks and finds purchase in in his body. All right, you doing your second. Yep. Offhand attack. Take your fist. You slam it in. Slam it into him. This time, this time, aiming for the face to try and really deal some damage. Fifteen. Uh, that will hit. Oh. oh. Ah, I dropped it. Eight. All right. Uh, as you as you slam your fist as you slam your fist into his into his head, you you just see the you hear the sickening crack as his head goes off to one side. He, he he's able to he's able to kind of shake it off, but he looks visibly dazed at this point. Um, uh, he's you see a slight trickle of blood start trickling down from his uh from his temple, um, from there, and you use your disengage. All right, uh, this brings us to Clarissa. All right, Clarissa has had enough. Of this Take it down. Shit and is going to use Searing Ray empowered oh. with Twist Fate to gain advantage on it, on his ass. All right. Jesus fucking God. Please I don't blow yourself up. Please don't I'm blow yourself up. Royally fuck this thing up. All right, so there's three rays from Scorching Ray. Uh, rolled a hit for the first one. I, I assume you make all the rays attacks uh, separately, right, Shadow? With I'm pulling it up right now just to look at it. I think so. I believe so. Uh, you cast three rays and hurl them. Uh, yeah, you make uh, three ranged attack spells uh, for each ray. Uh, you make three ranged attack spells. Okay, so first one is a... I use my advantage on that one. Yay. Alright, so the first one's a six. Yay. To hit? Okay, the second one... No, 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 you have to like roll to see if these hit first. That's what I'm doing. I rolled a six. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you rolled a six. Fantastic. So the first ray, foo, just goes off and um, flies flies off to the side of it, almost catching Karma on fire. At that point. Okay, the second one is an eighteen. That'll hit. Okay, so that's. Go ahead and roll this third attack just for just get the attacks out of the way. Yeah. Third one, twist face, is an eight. 
So, uh, so as as you as you form these as you form this fireball in your hands, you 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 uh, do a thrusting motion with your hands towards towards this giant troll. Two of the uh, two of the fireballs go streaking off off to the side, almost catching karma on almost catching karma on fire. The third one s slams square in the chest. Go ahead. <laughs> it, it deals a little bit of damage, not as much as you were expecting, but deals some damage. No, it'll still it'll still be good because we're at. Uh... Yeah, I could for that, so... Boop. So a total of 12? Yep. All right. All right. All right, so as the, uh, as the, uh, as the ray impacts its chest, it lets out, it lets out a, kind of a howl, but, like, you see just, you can see the burn mark around its, around its skin. It doesn't look like much of it got, it doesn't look like it really got burned that much. Um, it just looks like it is, it, it got slammed hard. Um, and, uh, and, uh, it takes, it takes a step back from it. It actually pushes it back about five feet from there. All right, so this brings us to... Oh, I, I'm gonna move, since it pushed it back out of combat. Yep, yep go I'm, for it. Uh, I'm gonna run, like, up there. All right, Glissa gets out. Glissa gets the fuck out. All right, this brings us over to Brea. Brea is going to move over this way. She is going to fling two more daggers at it. Foom, foom. Let's see how those go. Hit and natural twenty. Fuck yeah, Brea. Oh go yes. For it. All right, so Bre as uh, as Brea's daggers uh, pierce um, into the, pierce into it. First one deals a total of five damage, uh, five damage to it as it goes, funk and embeds itself in its ch into uh, into the side of its arm. Uh, the other one <laughs> uh, it will deal a total of six damage, <laughs> and that's the critical, unfortunately. Oh wait, hold on, no, it explode. Oh, so it deals a total of, well, it deals a total of ten damage, actually. Fantastic. Uh, as the other one uh, embeds itself into its upper shoulder. Fantastic. All right, this brings us to... Uh, let's see, the guards. Let's see, we still have one guard. He is uh, looking around, looking at a situation. Um, pause. Help! Help! The intruders are here! Uh, this one... Oh, this is... Yep, this one moves up here. Um, and this one was going to move and attack the guards. Uh, right, so. Jesus, these guards cannot roll for shit tonight. Uh, Yay. right, so. Fanguard, uh, the first one, uh, with the sword, the first one with the sword, um, actually, that one's moving. The first one with the sword comes up, swings, and attacks you, but, uh, you're able to, you see him out of the corner of your eye, you're able to dodge out of the way. Uh, the second one, um, uh, has already knocked an, has knocked a, uh, arrow in his bow. Uh, it's gonna be... A total of uh, six points of piercing damage to you, Sandguard, as the as the arrow foomp, embeds itself into your shoulder. Foomp. Roll. Ah, let me roll to the painful. Um, he roll. What was that? What did he roll? He rolled an uh, eighteen plus seven. So. Ooh. Wow. That's a hit. <clears throat> yeah, that's a hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trust me, I'm keeping track of your guys' AC. <laughs> All right, and this one down here. Roll. And, okay, so, um, Emir Emiral, um, as uh, as the guard in front of you takes and branches sword, he swings it across, uh, trying to get you. Um, you take a total of uh, five points of uh, sla uh, slashing damage from the guard in front of you. Okay. All right, so this brings us to. Uh, Tyrion. Okay. Now, yeah, let's see. I am chilling up here. You are no longer considered stealth at this point. Yeah, I kind of figured. Who's that guy? That would be that's... you. Or no. That that's, that's, that, that's what I thought. It's. Right I'm here? just making sure. Yeah, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get in, re in contact right. with everybody's. I thought so. Everyone's uh, right new here. character models. Salix is over here. I lied. That's Riven. Okay, that's Riven. Okay. What a night to choose new character models, huh? <laughs> well, it was gonna happen eventually. Okay. <clears throat> that's an enemy. Yep. Those. That's an enemy. There's an enemy also right here as well. That guy. Okay. Yep. That one as well. 
Was and this guy have... previously damaged? Did, did I remember that correctly? Uh, he has been previously damaged, yes. You can see a uh, slash. You can see a slash wound across his back at this point. Oh, okay. So I'm behind. All right. Well, I'm just gonna put this guy out of his misery. All right. Move up. Done. That was what? Ten feet? Fifteen feet? Ten feet? Yeah, okay, about ten feet. Fifteen feet. Fifteen. All right. So. Uh, ooh, 18? 18. Yep, that'll hit. Yeah. Oh, no, higher than that, but that's fine. It hits. Yeah. Uh, okay, there's my lucky D8. So far, anyway. Fuck you. Um, uh, let's see. How much damage? So, three and uh, six, uh, eight. All right. You, uh, you, you, you bring you, you basically charge up right behind this archer, and he, he just barely is able to see you just in time. But it's not; he's unable to dodge quick enough. As the blade, he turns around as the blade goes slamming into his abdomen. Um, he lets out a, Ugh! as blood kind of spurts out of his mouth and just across your face. You pull the blade out, and he, he reels back. He's, he's clutching his side, but he's, he's, he manages to, like, to really find his last, to find his, uh, to find his strength and able to remain standing. He, he's looking like he's on his last legs. All right. All right, this brings us to Emiral. You are farther way down here. Yeah, I'm way on the bottom. You're I way would, down on the bottom. I would like to pounce the guy, the guard that's right beside me. Okay. Jump on top of him and see if I can bite him. Yeah, go for it. That, that sounds more like Clarissa style. With a yeah. modifier of one, that's 19. Yep, that'll hit. So that puts him into prone. That'll put him into prone. And I will roll for damage hit. That's 19 to hit. Yep, that hits. And that is 1d... 1d6 plus 2. Right, roll it. That is a 6 in damage. All right. As you jump as you jump up, you land on his shoulders, push him down, you... You take a bite out of his, uh, aiming for his throat, but he's able to dodge his head out of the way. You manage to grab part of his shoulder. You pull back, tearing a good chunk of uh, flesh away. You taste that. Uh, you taste a nice taste of iron into your in your mouth as you um, as you go back from there. He's currently prone and on the ground. Fantastic. All right, is that it? That is it. All right, here we go. Because as a bonus action, the only thing I can do is bite somebody. If they're prone. All right, all right. So now we are on the troll's turn. Um, Ouch. Yep. <laughs> now you can say that again. All right. Mm. Um, I really thought I'd be dead by now. <laughs> uh, so. If the dice uh, didn't hate me, it probably would be. So karma. That's going to be. Uh, it rolled a natural fourteen. Um, uh, so that'll hit on you. The second attack. Is, uh, natural sixteen. Right. Uh, it's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten points of uh, slashing damage. First one. Um, and six, eight points of slashing damage for the secondary one. Holy fuck. As, as its claws come raking down across your back at the individual who had just basically slammed and tried to carve a piece out of its, uh, out of its side. Um, it slams uh, both claws into you. You take, uh, yeah, a lot of slashing damage. Pretty, pa pretty painful. Um, all right, and the spell throw is fifteen on that. Uh, by the way. Yeah. All right. Uh, as you as you're watching the trolls, uh, you um, notice that if uh, notice that the one or karma as your as the troll is attacking you, you see uh, his wounds. Uh, like the wound that you just inflicted onto his side start to slowly, like very slowly start to kind of seal itself. Alright. Alright, so both of the trolls have gone. Oh, oh, sorry, another one hasn't. Nope. Time to nope. pummel me to death. Nope. The, other, the, other, the other troll uh, down by you, Emiral, um, uh, takes both his claws and both completely whiff. It's <laughs> All right, this brings us to Thangart. Right, bud. And he couldn't make his saving throw. 
Um, I'm probably gonna turn and throw my throwing axe at this, uh, here. Okay. Go ahead and roll for attack. Yeah, I'm trying. Oh. Man. I cannot go and roll tonight. <laughs> nope. Oh. Uh, as you as you turn around and chuck your uh, chuck your throwing axe at it, it goes foom, 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 and just goes uh, it slams in like it's it slams into the troll's back, but it's the side that's not the blade. It's the handle that slams into it, and the, yeah. and the axe just goes foom, foom, right off into the side. So. All right, uh, Karma, you're. All right, I'm gonna. You're. Would you look at chat, please, Shadow? I'm watching it. Yeah. I'm trying to keep up with it as I'm loop pressing forward. Okay, so I am right at first going to disengage, so I don't provoke yeah. opportunities. Salix, have I missed you this entire time? Yeah, I haven't oh, attacked shit. once yet. Salix, take your. I don't know why I fucked that up. Sorry about that. <laughs> that is my fault. I'm I sure the first time, and then you definitely skipped me this time. What mm -hmm. was your? Ten. Oh, it should be in front of Thangart and behind Imaril. Uh, okay, yeah, go ahead and okay, go ahead and attack then. Okay. Or do do. <laughs> I'll give you two. Attacks. We'll have you go twice for here, just so you can get your damage and everything. And I'll uh, go to the initiative order. Kill the troll. I'm an idiot. Not really. I just forgot something. Okay. Uh, let's go over here. Oh wait, that's too far. Well, you have two turns of movement, by the way. Too. I guess I do. Can I just take my movements, and my attacks at the same time? I'm casting spells. Yeah, that's fine. So, here. Okay. Um, I wasn't fully done with my attack, but once he's done, can I get back in there? Yeah, sorry about that. I keep forgetting fighters have a shit ton of attacks. Well, no, I only have one unless I take my bonus action. Oh, uh, okay. So this no. guy's getting a second level guiding bolt. All right. But yeah, I think I'll do that. Nope. Oh, wait, we're back. That's a guy uh, that's 19. It's a 24. 24 will hit. Oh, shit. Whew. Holy hell. Damn. All right. Oh, whoa. All right. As you, uh, as you... Uh, focus on the holy symbol on your on your uh, on your mace. You point it. You point it directly. You see your mace begin to glow with divine energy. Uh, at the very at the very end of the tip, it poof, shoots out a ray of divine energy right and slams into the back of the troll. Uh, the troll lets out a howl scream. This time being almost like thrown fully forward into the ground. Um, uh, it lets out a snarl. Uh, rears back at you and uh, see and uh, uh, sees sees where you're at at that point. And my other attack from my first turn yep. is going to be a Sacred Flame on this guy. Go for it. It's a cantrip. I've never cast this before, so how does this work? It says the target will succeed on a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Do I have to uh, for that, or the troll? No, that's me. Okay. That's me. Uh, he rolled a natural 18, plus, so 19. Uh, what's your spell to save, DC? My spell to save, DC. 17. He makes it. He makes a save. Okay, so if he didn't make that save, then it would He hit. would take full damage. Since it's not, he's going to take half damage. So, okay, so since he made the save, he still takes half that damage? Yeah, so you still roll your damage. Uh, he's just taking half of it. So cantrips that cast like that always take damage, whether it's full or half? Most spells always do that. A lot of spells will be like yeah. that. It, it will oh, okay. specifically say gotcha. in the description of it. So, yeah. So, that's a... 1d8 of radiant damage. That's a 3 over 2, so 1. 2. Yeah. Be a two. Round down. Yeah. Round, round down. down round up. Oh. Round up. So the two. You rolled a d8. No, I did not. Roll a d8. Seven over two. Four. <laughs> so yeah, so he takes four. He takes four points of damage. Okay. Yeah. It's a d8 for sacred flame. Uh, okay. Fine. I get, I had a uh, half damage, and my head was like half the number of sides of the dice. Nope, yeah, you still roll the same you dice. You roll the same dice, and it's just that yeah. value over two. It just takes a slower amount. Okay, so that takes your Salix and Thangart. You said you weren't done with your attack? Uh, yeah. But that should Salix get two, though. That was the second. Oh. I did a Guiding Bolt and Sacred Flame. 
yeah so gotcha. he the 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 sacred flame slams into him as well and almost tries like you can start to see like a little bit of skin uh, seems to be catching on fire he um uh the the mist uh, is able to let uh able to put some of it out but he he's howling in pain for a little bit okay Okay, so I'm going to use my action surge, which just gives me enough action, and then yep. I'm going to cast the cantrip uh, blade ward. Cool. And that just has some sense of cantrip. I'm pulling it up real quick. Blade ward. She um, to a whole bunch of damage types. Uh, you extend your hand and trace a sigil of warding in the air, so you would have to... Uh, use something, you'd have to basically, like, putting away your uh, axe for a moment, you take your hand, you trace the arcane sig or the arcane uh, sigils, um, of warding in the air until your next turn. You have resistance against bludging, piercing, slashing damage dealt by any weapon. Fantastic. Nice job. Alright. Anything else good to say? Nope, that's it, thanks. Now it's Karma's right. turn. <laughs> okay, now it's Karma's turn. Let's try that again. <laughs> now that I have the initiative order correct. <laughs> Okay, well, Karma is going to immediately disengage, so I don't attack, attack, so I don't yep. provoke act, attack of opportunity. Yep. And then I'm going to run like a motherfucker. Um, let's see. Yeah, just way quickly, over here. Quickly, 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 or you're gonna lose it. Ooh. Way over here. All right. Get away. Yep. And I'll 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 prepare already an attack in case somebody comes comes close. All right, and you're readying your attack. All right, sounds good. All right, this brings us to the top of the round with Riven. All right, what is still... Is this thing still alive over here? Uh, yes, that guy is looking like he's on his last legs. He's really rough, and then there's uh, one guy still attacking Thangard as well, as well as the troll. At yeah, 15, taking, taking on this guy again. All right, go for it. Said 15. For the That's troll. 15 feet. No, no, no. That's, oh, okay, I'm just yeah. keeping track of my movement. Yep. Yeah, I might not actually see. Thirteen. Uh, thirteen will just barely hit. Oh. Yeah. Make sure you guys know what you're doing before your turn comes around. That way, like, it's just it's quick. It gets us through it. Seven like, damage. Uh, yep. As you take as you take your sword, you slam it across the front of him. Uh, this time, uh, this time, not even really. Uh, you slam it, um, basically aiming, slam it straight across him. His, uh, it goes right through his neck. He stands there for a moment. His hands come up to his neck, and just as he's gasping, he, you see just blood pour as he slumps to the ground, dead. All right, here's a question. Can I move and then use my bonus to attack? Yes, you can. Okay. So I'm going to move down one, use my bonus to attack him with a fist. All right, after after slashing through that guy, you dart off to the side. You take your you take your fist, per, uh, game ready to strike true. 22. Yeah, that'll hit. 8. All right. Uh, you slam in you slam into the guy's armor, you find the you find the weak spot, you're able to really deal some deal some internal damage right there. Very nicely done. And then I don't think I can disengage off this guy for free, right? Because nope, I didn't use already... my attack. It's it's still technically a melee attack. Oh no, it's a bonus. It's a bonus. Um, yeah, it's a bonus. It's, a bonus. Action, so. it's not my actual attack. It's bonus, so. so it's not it. Yeah. So no. All it's right. A, so you're, st you're, you're stuck there. Hang. All right. This brings us to Clarissa. What are you doing? All right. She's gonna take a couple steps backwards or okay. sideways, rather, like to here, and then stepping in, to... stepping into the uh, water. Uh, your your pink dress that you spent some money on is very very dirty at this point, as you've been traipsing through the bog at this point for this oh, entire cool. time. I can I can clean that shit. I got press the digitation. All right. Oh, and you pronounced it right. Yeah. Press the digitation. Working on it. All right. I'm gonna magic missiles this big ugly motherfucker's ass. As you, go, yeah, go ahead and roll for it. Go ahead and roll for it. You, as you coalesce some arcane magic, three three bolts go poop 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 uh, right around right around your uh, right around your head. Foom foom foom. They go speeding off towards the troll. Okay, and I. I actually have a quick question on this. Do yes. I add my profic my spell damage bonus and proficiency to each dart, or is it the total? I'm not sure if I've been doing that right. You would roll the... Because it's from three darts, missile. each 1d4 plus one force damage, so I think you would do three 1d4... It's three 1d4 plus your spell attack bonus, I believe. Okay. 
If need be, I'll go back and we'll double check that for next week. But for now, let's say that's what it is. Okay, yeah, I, I think I've been doing that. So, do that. So, 13? Yep. So, all right. Uh, is that, so that's for all three, yep, all three automatically hit, so perfect. As, as the three arcane bolts go, foom, 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 they just each strike, coosh, 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 directly into it. Two slamming into his chest, the other one slamming into his head, making it go reeling back for a second as it, as it has to take a moment to regain its footing. You see that, you see, uh, while the spell isn't dealing any outside damage, you do see that a little bit of blood is starting to trickle from its, from its mouth, um, as it lets out a very, very angry roar at that point. Um... All right, this brings us to Brea's turn. Brea is going to uh, going to move slightly over this way. And is going to once again do her once again same double dagger that she always does. Nope. And yes, so the first dagger go, goes flying th flying forward, um, uh, dealing uh, ten points. Uh, uh, the first dagger goes flying forward. Goes completely over the over the troll's shoulder. The second one strikes true into its chest. This thing's starting to look like a porcupine at this point, um, and it deals a she deals a nice solid ten damage uh, to this thing uh, to the troll. Um, well, it's had a horrible scream from there. All right, so the guards uh, who are remaining. That's the one who's on prone. Uh, all right, so the one attacking you, Amiral, is going to take its half its movement to stand up. Um, I haven't attacked this turn at all either. Well, it's not your turn yet, so like, oh, okay. he's, just, he's just he's just standing up. Okay. Um, so he's taking his time to stand up. Uh, he's going to make a quick attack against you, which will miss, of course, because uh, I can't roll for shit tonight. Uh, and then the other guard attacking Thangard, but uh, takes a sword, swings out of Thangard, uh, but misjudging how high the dwarf is off the ground, manages to swing over his head. So, moving on from there, we have Tyrion. Okay. Here it is. What do you yeah, mean? Sorry, I am. Da, da, da. Quick question. Mm -hmm. How is that guy looking? Uh, that guy, from what you can see, ha uh, is um, has some blood has some blood trickling out of his mouth. He's got uh, some burn marks and uh, from the okay, radiant damage yeah, across so his back. So it was from that guy. Just he's look he's sure. looking hurt. He's looking pretty hurt right now. He's looking. All right. Hurt. Well, I'm gonna sneak up behind him and attack then. All right. Go ahead and roll your attack. Hmm. All right, you know what? And I'm going to expend a spell slot. Uh-huh. Oh, no, wait, I have to hit him first, so I rolled. You got to hit him Never first. Mind. Natural 20. Ooh, Bam, natural go for it. 20. That, that's a hit. Definitely going to expend a spell slot. Then. Go for it. For Divine Smite. Fuck yeah. So I get to roll... Roll damage. Oh, that's gonna hurt. 4d, no, 3d8. Good. Just say, isn't it? Well, no, okay, so it's 2d8 plus 3. So is this a spell that's I think, six. or is this something under the paladin? Paladin right? ability. Ah, thank you. So, I mean, that's not brilliant. That's gonna be 9 damage for the 2d8. Alright. Oh, no, wait. Okay, so I'm sorry. Because this is my first critical hit. I roll... Do I roll two, two dice for the double damage, or do I... You roll the dice, you multiply it by two. Oh, okay. So, so, like, you basically... So it's like, okay, I rolled a three. All right, that's a six. Um, you roll the dice, multiply that by two, then add the modifiers. Okay, and that's for every single... For any dice roll that you roll for your attack. Okay, so that's... So for Four divides. plus three is seven, and then oh, that's an eight, and that's a seven. So it's going to be fifteen plus seven is twenty-two times two. Yeah, all right. So that's forty-four. So as you um, as you, uh, I gotta find this ability so I can actually see what the fuck it does. Divine Smite is going to be a page. I already found it. Um. Okay, got it. So, so as you as you as you run up behind as you run up behind this troll, you take you take a running leap. You grasp both your uh, you grasp your sword and your um, 
in both your hands. You come down, arcing as the divine energy uh, is completely encompassing your blade. You bring it down, slamming across the uh, across the back of the troll. Um, it, uh, as you come down, landing on the ground, uh, the troll lets out a howling scream, falling forward. Um, now, uh, fall, falling forward flat onto its face uh, into into the bog, um, seemingly unconscious and dead. All right. A mural, this is your turn now. Oh boy. Since that guy got up, I can't fight, so I'm gonna go back and claw you can always take again. the You can always take the uh, disengage action, I believe. Oh. I can? Or, no, that's not. Disengage is a, is a free action for anybody. Not a free action, but it's an action anybody can take. I was about to say, if you want to get away and get closer to others, you can take a disengage action. Um, like, it, you won't be able to attack, but you would be able to get away. Okay. I would like to disengage. Disengage? Yes. And then move, move um, to where you would like to move from there. You are the panther still, I take it. 5, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Would put you go me... to the little... If you go to the little comb thing, the, the fourth thing down, you can cl click and drag yeah, and see how far you're going. Okay, cool. You moved. But I All went right, down so. and around so I wouldn't get... Okay, well, I, the disengage means you don't get any attack of opportunity. You. Okay. So, as you move. Okay, so you move out of the way. You're able to... Uh, you as a panther are able to, sl are able to fully get away, uh, fully like, kind of pounce, off, pounce back. The troll uh, smells, you, uh, smells, and sniffs the smells and sniffs the direction that you have moved. Um... Uh, and this one, uh, and the guard uh, begins chasing after you as well. This brings us to the troll. Uh, this brings us to the troll's turn. Uh, the oh. troll in front of you, Tyrion, um, uh, twitches for a second, and then falls completely limp against the ground, dead. All right. Okay. This other troll um, is gonna going to be my ass. <laughs> is going to be is going to move over here, um, and is going to take two. Slashing attacks against the panther that uh, previously just eluded it. Oh, damn it. And both... God, that one cannot roll for shit either. Uh, and they both absolutely just whiff. <laughs> they go slash, slash, right across right across you, but you're able to... Uh, uh, being an animal and being in base shape, you're able to dodge very quickly out of the way. All right. This brings us to Salix. So we have... This guy, this guy, and the troll are still standing. You have three enemies. You have a guard who's still been attacking Thanguard for months. Um, uh, you have a guard. You have a guard farther down in the fog that you are currently unaware of at the moment in time. And you have uh, another giant ass troll, which currently, from where you guys are standing, is, uh, or from where you are standing, is you can make it out, but it's a little hard to see fully. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to cast uh, Sacred Flame on this fellow again. Well, I'm, come on, on the other guy. What is going on? Click. Oh, because I'm measuring, not pointing. Yeah. Ooh. All right. I do that what's way the, too uh, often. What's the range on that? Uh, that oh, is... Oh, hold on. I might be out of range because that's a different spell. I should check. Might have to move. I'll let you know in a second because I have it up. Uh, it is 60 feet. I can reach. Yeah, you can reach that. Yep, you can easily reach that. So he has to make a dex throw again. Yep, go for it. Wait, I do? He's yeah, he whiffs on his dex throw. Oh, he does? Okay. Yeah. He, he rolled a five. <laughs> so, nine. All right. So as you as you focus your divine energy, focusing on the, uh, the, the power and the... Um, the lawful goodness that is Helm, uh, you fire off uh, another bolt from another bolt from your uh, from your mace. It goes shoo, slamming direct, slamming directly into the troll, uh, dealing uh, dealing a slight amount of burn damage onto his back of, of holy of holy energy. But um, uh, he, he turns he turns sniffing the air, trying to f <sighs> try to find where that just came from. All right, uh, do anything else that turns is that it? Um, it's gonna look at me. Let's quickly, move quickly, quickly. here. <laughs> All right, Thanguards. Your turn. Let's see here. Whoa! What happened to that uh, troll? So dead. 
Tyrion killed it. <laughs> I, killed I killed it like twice. <laughs> I'm um, yeah, attack in front, I guess. Well, All I right. mean... You will get advantage on this roll because you are currently quote-unquote flanking with um, uh, with uh, Riven. Well, that sounds awesome. So you can roll... Doesn't matter. Oh, wait, no. Oh, it yeah, it does. Oh. Yeah, uh, so 14, yeah, so the first, so your first attack will hit. Wait, I get multiple attacks? Or I don't know, however, however you're, you're attacking. Well, if he had advantage, wouldn't he roll twice? Does he, he know twice? And, roll twice and take, roll twice, take the higher. Okay. So, so currently it's a, so currently it's a 14, roll again. Yeah, so it, it, it hits. <laughs> I was just hoping for a natural 20. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. I was, I was hoping like, for Come it. on, nat 20, nat 20? Nope. Okay. Right. Go ahead and make your damage. So, eight points of damage. Uh, you take your axe, go slamming into... Uh, uh, you take your you take your damage, you're able to find purchase kind of on his upper shoulder. Uh, the axe digs in a good solid, like, half inch uh, you, before, you pull it at, before you pull it out. Um, he lets out a scream in pain. Uh as it progresses. All right, Karma, over to you. Okay, question. If I move to uh, right about here, do I have to... I, I have an open attack on him, right? Uh, yeah, and you would get your sneak attack because he's currently engaged with two other individuals if you chuck your daggers at him. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to actually... Yeah, I'll do that. I'll go right here, and then I'll go dagger. Funk. Make your attack roll. That is a 14. Uh, that will hit. Sweet. Okay. So 2 plus 2, 4, and then I get 2d6 plus that. Holy shit, all ones on those. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, 17, or not 17, uh, 7 total damage. All right. How many as, ones did you roll? <laughs> Jesus. So as Than, as uh, as Thangard has just pulled out pulled his axe out of the guy, the guy is looking. He, he's clutching his sword, going <laughs> right as the dagger goes, fook, 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 right into his chest. He goes, oh, lets out a pain. The dagger just sticks there, um, and he, is sitting there in his chest right now. Okay. Then for my cunning action, I'm going to. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to dash, and I'm going to get like all the way over here. Dash is an action. I oh wait, you're using your cunning. I'm gonna action. use my cunning action to dash and GTFO. Oh, you're taking. A, okay, so your bonus action will be to. Um, Instead of throwing bonus. another dagger, I'm just gonna yep. get the fuck out. So I take it that was your regular dagger. It wasn't your flame tongue. That was my flame tongue, and the oh. flame tongue did one okay, so damage. The, like, okay, so your flame tongue is still currently sticking in the guy's body right now. Yeah. Mm. Where'd you move to? I'm over by uh, Bria. Over here. Okay, I see where you're at. Okay, I gotcha. All right, this brings us to the top of the round with Riven again. So is this dude dead yet? Which one? No, he's still standing. Oh my god! All right, swinging. That guy was like the last to enter combat. He like was like way far off and just did not attack at all. So all right. no, he's he's been far away for a while. Twenty-three. Yeah, that'll hit. Six. With the oh. sword. Oh. Yep. As you as you take your sword, you you uh, you go to try and jam it into it. You, you take it, try to jam it into his abdomen. And you find purchase. It slams in. It's just off. Of, it's just off to the side, or off to his uh, off to his uh, left side. Um, he goes like, Ugh! and lets out a little lets out a little gag of blood. He brings his face up to look at you and just snarls at you as you have your uh, sword stay uh, in in his belly at this moment in time. He's still alive. He's still breathing. Twenty. Yep, that'll hit. As you, as as he's standing there, you take you take your fist, you uh, slam it right where his you slam it right where his heart would be, and you feel uh, th you feel through your monk through your monk training, you feel his heart just stop as you punch him, and he falls back off of your sword into the marsh, dead. Fourteen was a hit, not my damage. Well, it doesn't matter. He had one hit point. Oh, okay, yeah, because I rolled seven matter. for damage. Yep. All, All right. right. Uh, do I know that thing's down there? You can see the hulking shake moving at the most at this moment in time. Moving down there, and you've heard the gr you've heard the guttural yells of what you expect to be basically another troll. All right, I'll move forty of my fifty. Okay. That's you get down there. Now you can fully see there is another troll down there attacking what appears to be a giantly large panther, or just a panther yeah. in general. 
All right, this brings us to Clarissa. Okay, Clarissa yeah. is going to run down this way, and because I don't think I can really see this thing clear enough to make an attack at it without, without any hope of, you know, not setting somebody else on fire, I'm going to put True Strike on uh, Riven. All right, what's the range on True Strike? Uh, it's fairly long, I believe. Let me double check the spell sheet. I want to say it's like 60 feet. Probably, yeah. Uh, True Strike is 30 feet. Oh, okay. Maybe not. Um, yeah, he's just a bit too nope. far. You're yeah. just out of range. All right, then I will put it on Tyrion. All right, go ahead. Uh, I you, like the sound of that. You extend your hand. You point. Uh, you point your. Uh, you you place your hand point uh, facing at Tyrion. Um, you, uh, Tyrion. All of a sudden, you feel this warm, magical energy, and. Your brain, your like your brain, instinctively like closes off and shields its, shields your mind from it, um, expecting to be attacked. But then you realize it's it's a friendly energy. It's Clarissa's magical energy. Um, you you uh, you f you find that your eyes are uh, slowly glazed over as you are able to pierce through the fog and you're able to see um, uh, the tr uh, this giant hulking troll looming over um, a. Looming over a uh, panth looming what, over what looks like a panther. Um, I'm gonna make sure I'm reading this correctly and doing this right. Yep. Because this is a fun one. Uh, so you gain advantage on uh, your first attack roll of against uh, a target um, next turn. So for your next round, you get advantage on your attack roll. Here. Oh. Okay. And you know exactly where this thing's weak spots are, so that's what it is. That's so as you're as you're understanding that, you're that's what's giving you the advantage. So, all right. Oh. So this brings us to oh Raya. My. Is that on all attack rolls? Uh, it's just on your first one. So only the first attack roll. Yeah, only the first attack roll for uh, true strike. Okay. Okay. I need to. Look something up real quick. I'm First attack up. roll against a, against a target, provided the spell hasn't ended. All right, so Brea. It um, it has here, to be next round, right? It'll it'll be your next turn. So this okay. coming turn, Brea is going to move here. She's going to chuck uh, another. She's going to chuck a single dagger uh, at thing. Uh, dagger completely goes spinning off in the wrong direction, um, and she's then going to here. That will be her turn. Brings us to Tyrion. Oh, no, sorry, not it. Brings us to the guards, actually. Uh, Good, because I need is gonna, a hot second. This card's going to move here. Um, see Riven and see Brea, and he's going to uh, continue racing at Brea. He's going to make a strike against her. It's a natural one. As he swings, he kind of slips, falls, and slips. He falls flat down in the bog and is currently prone for his next round. <laughs> I'm guessing he rolled a one. Yeah. No, he did roll a one. That's what I said. <laughs> Huh, all right. Do you have this, the opposite now. of loaded die. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm rolling like three different natural, three different d20s. It's ridiculous. Oh. Um, all right, this brings us to this now brings us to Tyrion. Okay, so hmm. All right. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do, and this is going to be fun. Um. This troll thing here is still alive, right? The one. The one that is currently fighting the panther and is down by Brea is, yes, currently alive. Okay, so I'm gonna have to. And just bear with me for a second because I had to get creative and look some stuff up. 35 feet. Alright, perfect. <clears throat> so I'm gonna move down here next to Brea. Alright. I. I wasn't sure I was going to do this tonight, but I'm going to use my new shield. <laughs> nice. Okay, I'm going to use my new shield, right? And just bear with me here because I think this works. So that's a bonus action. Counts as your bonus action, yes. Now, I can only make one attack after that, right? Like, I can't throw two weapons at someone. I don't have that ability. Right. So okay. for this so I'm round, gonna take for, out this, one of my for this round, for this round, it counts as a bonus action. Next turn, if you wanted to, you could, 
you could, like, we were, right when I were looking this up, you could make two attacks using um, your normal attack and then also using your bonus action for your offhand attack. Right, okay, if but I can still make one something. attack. So I'm going to make one yeah. attack. I'm going to pull out one of my fine new daggers. Go for it. I'm going to throw it so as at you, that troll. As you, as, you speak, as, you speak the, uh, as you speak the command word, your, your shield... And I'm, again, going to expend... Ooh, you know what? I'm going to use a spell, and I'm going to cast Wrathful Smite. So are you attacking with the dagger, or, you do, or is it... It's both. No, the Wrathful okay. Smite is... Um, I basically, I have to... Ca no, that is a bonus action, too. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna throw the dagger. Okay. I got so as, I got carried away. As you run as you run up to as you run up right beside Brea, Brea is in the midst of fight is in the midst of uh, dodging out of. We're getting ready to dodge out of the way as this guard just face plans right in front of her. Uh, you kind of stand there, laugh for a second. You speak the uh, you speak the word you speak the uh, the activation phrase for your Vada. for your uh, for your shield. The shield bursts into life. There's a there's a uh, green glow of ener of magical energy as the shield. Leaps off of your, leaps out of your hand, and uh, positions itself right directly in front of you, hovering, um, hovering in the air, and hovering in the air as you, uh, as you look around, as you look off to the sides, you can see a little bit of the green energy uh, emanating, about a good solid like six to seven inches out, or just uh, farther away from where the shield's actual boundaries are. Um, you, you lean off to the side, you take the that, you take your dagger, you chuck it as far as you can, as hard as you can. Go for a roll for attack. With advantage, right? With advantage. Okay. 21 versus... That'll hit. <laughs> natural 20. Boom! Oh, man. Go for it. Oh, double. Damage. So I roll 1d6. Do I do 1d6 plus 3 and then multiply it, or do... No. You multiply the dice. Multiply, multiply the dice. The dice. So that no, is what So d6. Oh, come on, baby. So it's, um, yeah, so it's the D6 for the dagger itself. Five, um, so that's ten plus three, so thirteen. So it's thirteen points of damage, nice. So as you, as you, uh, as you fling out, you throw the dagger, it slams directly into, uh, slams directly underneath, underneath its armpit. And, uh, it looks like it, punct it looks like it might have punctured some, um, some organ as a gout of blood just, Explodes from the side. Um, explodes from the side of it. Uh, it uh, it lets out this howling uh, from from there. All right. Oh. Guards. All uh, right. Uh, uh, this brings us to a mural. Okay, I'm gonna jump on this thing's back and start like trying to bite its neck or something. Okay, you're gonna need to make an athletics check for that uh, okay. because this thing is tall as fuck. This thing's like almost ten to twelve feet tall right at this point. It's okay. it, it's pretty tall. Athletics check. Add your strength. What's the difference? That is an nineteen. That and an what was that? Nineteen. Nineteen. You're able to jump up. You're able to jump up. Go ahead and make your attack as you're as you're coming down onto it. All right. You're able to jump up. You're able to land on its back. And that is a five plus two. For the Seven. attack. Yeah. What are you, are oh, you trying to oh, bite or are you trying to claw? Oh, bite. Yeah. As you uh, as you land on its back, you're able to sink your claw. You're able to sink your claws, like at least be able to grab on and hold on for a second. As you take as you uh, as you take your uh, as you take your mouth and you like basically just t tear a huge uh, uh, f piece of flesh. Uh, it's a little harder and tougher than you're expecting to. Almost kind of like a really really tough steak that wasn't quite cooked all the way through. Uh -huh. um, it the the taste of iron fills your mouth as you tear this chunk of uh, of skin and meat away. Um, uh, leaving a nice uh, bite size, you're able to. Uh, you're, uh, it, you drop down to the ground uh, where you land for there. Okay. And that's that's about all you can do at that point. That's, okay. That was your movement to jump uh, for your uh, plus then your attack and then your bon uh, plus the your bonus. Your, and the bonus. Yeah, the bonus for, for action the yeah. for the bite. Yeah. Nice. Well done. Um, how much was how much damage was that? Seven. Okay. All right. It's uh, a D six plus two. Yep, you're good. Okay, uh, Riven to answer. Athletics is like is more of like a climbing is more like climbing and jumping and like jumping up, like kind of using your muscles to really get to where you need to be. Athletics is more or acrobatics is more whether or like if you're falling and you need to like catch yourself or something like that. Okay. That's that's the difference there. Okay. Uh, progressing forward, this brings us to the troll's turn. Uh, right. Oh, troll. Um. 
as as you guys are watching the troll, the troll, you see uh, you see the impacts that you've made start to slowly stitch themselves together um, uh, through some form of through some form of means um, that trolls have. Uh, the troll is going to uh, is going to uh, move over here. It's going to take uh, so uh, in mural you get an opportunity attack against it. So it's going to be your claw oh. attack. We roll a d20. Eleven. Add, add whatever. You, add whatever yeah. stuff 14. for your fourteen. Just barely misses. Uh, the troll is able to step away. You are just barely misses swipe. Um, uh, it's going to attack Tyrion. It's going to do one attack against Tyrion. Uh, oh my. Uh, nope. <laughs> God no. Oh, what did you roll? Uh, a six plus seven, so not good not, enough. Not enough. A, <laughs> the, the, the claw comes arcing down, slamming into the shield. You feel the impact, but like uh, the the magical energy of the shield is able to take most of it. Um, and fucking hell. Man. And that's like still just like floating in front of me, right? Okay. What was? Yeah, it's still just floating. Oh, right that's you. badass. Yeah. Um, the se uh, as 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 he does that, the second the second claw comes down, slashing not at you but directly at Brea, who's uh, directly off to your side. Um, Brea, who's uh, more, who's more kind of concerned about the, uh, uh, is able to see it, um, is able to see it, but is unable to dodge out of the way quickly enough. She takes a total of eleven points of uh, slashing damage uh, as the, as the claws rake right against right against the front. The, her, the bulk of her armor is able to catch it, but uh, there's a but she lets out a, uh, as though as the wind has been knocked out of her. Um, all right. Yes, Emiro, you can. It just okay. takes one action to do that. Okay. All right. Uh, this brings us to Salix. Okay. One second. Salix, to the best of your ability, it does not appear to be dam It does not appear to be changing or anything. Okay. Can I make a general question about D and D trolls? Yes. Are they affected by fire at all? It's not fire. It's fire-like radiant. It's more like a fire. So it's like it looks like fire, but it's more like. It's more fire. like so radiant damage. You're dealing radiant damage to it. Especially. Okay. Oh, well, I know and exactly. you can ask a question about it. Um, what's the question? Oh, that was it. That was the question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the troll doesn't have anything along those lines. All right. So I guess I'll be more direct. This guy's still standing, right? At least not this one. Oh yeah, he's still. Oh yeah, that guy's. Well, he's not prone. He has disadvantage. Like, so you have advantage on any attack against him. So alive, but not standing. He's alive. He's just laying face down in the ground at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna whack him with a mace. All right, you move up. Dude, I like your style, cleric. <laughs> <laughs> You're my kind of holy man. <laughs> there we go. Holy man. <laughs> oh, there's a nat twenty with advantage. Shit. Yes. <laughs> that's that's three I to nine. Salix, Salix, as you run, as you run up, um, where are you at, by the way? What? All right, okay, I see you. All right, as you as you run as you run as you run up and race towards the race towards the uh, guard that you see fo or the the guard that you see laying on the ground, you raise your uh, you raise your mace, bringing it down. What was the attack? Oh, you rolled now twenty. Um, I hit him for twelve. Hit for twelve. Shit. Uh, you slam it into his head. His head just concaves, thunk, right underneath him, um, and he is dead. As as you pull it back, you just blood dripping off of it. D D D. Little bit, dead. little bit, little bit of little bit of brain matter coming off. Pretty pretty gross. All right, brings us to Thangart. What do you got for me? I'm gonna run as close as I can to these people over here. I can only go 25, so here. And then and then I'm gonna chuck an act that troll. Alright. If I move to or just remove me. Uh you're fine for where you're at. Uh the troll's like ten feet tall, so you can easily aim over Bray's head and really chuck it in, unless you draw like a natural one. Yeah, you're fine. So yeah, that's yeah, that uh sacred flame or not the sacred flame, the hand axe goes uh uh goes foom, foom, foom. Funk, and uh, slams into uh, the troll's upper, slams into the troll's upper shoulder, upper right shoulder. Funk, and just sits there, uh, 
Let's add a girdling yell. Go ahead and roll for damage. Uh, our damage is nine. Solid. All right. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, that's it. All right, Karma, you're up. Okay, this body was over here, so I'm going to run over there. That's 30 feet over there. I'm going to pick up the flame tongue dagger. Okay. Um, and does that count as my action, or do I just pick it up for free? I'll give it a free action. Okay. Then I'm going to use my... You race over You race over there. You fumble for a second, find the dagger off the body, pull it out. Sunk. Okay, so then I'm going to use my regular action to dash okay. over here. So that's 30 more feet. And then okay. I'm going to use my bonus action to hide, try and go stealth. Uh, all right. Um, go ahead and make a stealth check. Uh, yeah, just go ahead and make that stealth. Uh, go ahead and make that stealth check. Um, or how are you stealthing? Well, I want to kind of blend in with any of the brush or you know trees or anything. You're in the middle of the there. water. Okay, then. Uh... <laughs> Merge yourself underwater. Just, there, your there's a real simple explanation for that one. Go for it. <laughs> Tell me how you want stealth. Okay, then yeah, I'll try and go underneath water, whatever. <laughs> Perfect. Go ahead and roll stealth. <laughs> whatever. Go for it. Okay, that yeah, is obvious. Uh, is obvious. Ooh, that's actually twenty-one. It's on. As you uh, as you go running, you basically jump. Not in the most graceful dive, but that you've ever seen you do. But you you slam into the water. You impact. Not enough to take any damage, but like your your entire body does manage to go underwater. You're you're currently stealth, you think? <laughs> oh, God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, moving up to Riven. Over to you. Back at the top of the round. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> rope's doing rope things. Is oh, that good. a feat you took, submersible? <laughs> it's a feat uh, of so this thing's pretty tall, right? This thing's it, 10 feet tall. It's a homebrew feat. I can't. I wanna. <laughs> I wanna run at him and try to slide under him in a slash while I'm doing it. Is that a thing? Yeah, you can certainly attempt to. Go for yeah, it. why not? We're all standing near it. Go for it. What do I do for that? Uh, all right, so um, uh, I'm gonna say you're gonna have to make. <laughs> oh Jesus! Uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to make an ath. Uh, this one's gonna be more Athletic. of an acrobatics check. I'm good with that. You're gonna have to make an acrobatics check. Um, and that'll, uh, so what did you roll for that? 23. Because it's 17 oh plus God. 6, I'm really acrobatic. Yep. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> it was, it was a toss up. So as, as you, as you go running kind of Naruto style, arms flying out, uh, <laughs> flying, out behind, flying out behind you, you make it to just, you make it to just where you're like, where you have to kind of leap over the dead body that, uh, Sailor's just basically bashed his skull in. I was going to jump off the dead body, but. Oh, okay. You jump no, off the. No, no, no. Oh, I was. I was gonna say you have to jump over the dead body. As you as as you continue running, you go into a slide. Uh, you take you take your blade. You take your blade out. Go ahead and make your attack as you pass underneath. Um, underneath of the. Oh my god. Underneath of the troll. It's a sixteen plus my thing, so twenty-two. Yeah, that'll hit. Jesus. God. Nine damage. Yep. Nine damage. All right. So as as you as you go sliding as you go sliding right by its shins, you take your you take your short sword, funk, and just kind of like really ram it, like really like kind of slides right across its right across its shin. Let's out a hot, giant howl, and it almost and it drives it down to one knee. Um, Cause then I want to climb on top of it and try to gouge its eyes out with my unarmed deck. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, god. So much movement speed. I feel like you had. Uh, I'm gonna say that uh, it would take a bonus action uh, to, to get on top actually, of it. to actually climb on top of it. Okay. So um, you, you you're you're currently behind it at this point in time, um, but you can't. I don't think you're gonna be able to get up on top of it. You could always go for the loin cloth. <laughs> say, let's let's do let's do the swift kick to the nuts again, like the Yoni. <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, as 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 you pop up as you pop up behind it, go ahead and roll your unarmed attack. 15. 21. 21. Jesus Christ, dude. Uh, yeah, I'll hit. <laughs> I have an insanely high dex mod. Jesus. Six. All right. As 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 you pop up behind it, uh, you you basically just you basically spin around real you spin around real quick. You take your leg, you soccer ball kick and it, kick it into its nut. It lets out a gutter. As it, it screams in pain. 
Um, but uh, it, it deals some damage, but not as much as you're expecting. So. Okay. Uh, back off. Stop. Five feet, so that if it goes after me. I have a quick question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's a soccer ball kick? Fair. I'm fair. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a weird game that's played in Gadget to Peak. You're not 100% sure what it is. It might involve diamonds. It might involve other no, things. That no, no. I'm, I'm asking as a, as a real human person <laughs> who, like, plays soccer. Like, I don't play soccer. I was never allowed to play sports a as a child. soccer so, ball kick as opposed to just... I was, never, on punch it, I was never allowed to play sports as a child. I don't know the <laughs> no. difference. It's, I it's, it's fair enough. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Clarissa. Sorry. Continue. All right. Clarissa is going to take a couple steps forward here and throw a you? firebolt. Oh my god, you're so far away. So, Football fire, kick. <laughs> firebolt time. Are you within range, I take it? Yeah, firebolt's 120 feet. Oh yeah, you're definitely within range. Alright, so that would be 10 plus... Okay, 16 to hit. That'll just hit. Okay, and then damage would be 1d10. Okay. Yeah, yay. One pump. <laughs> 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 what, 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 Alright, I would <laughs> ask what are the odds? But about ten percent. But about ten percent, yeah. Uh, Clarissa, Jesus. Uh, Clarissa, as you as you form the firebolt, a uh, firebolt in the middle of in 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 the palm of your hand, you see this red energy goes streaking off towards it. it goes, Pew! and just as it makes it, just kind of there, makes it to the thing, it goes, <laughs> and just kind of s showers it and sparks. Uh, it it it's kind of just, it, it takes a point of damage, but it's the humidity. Okay. Just, yeah, it's the humidity. <laughs> but, but the real question, and something we've been getting to do, is does he catch on fire? Because flammable things can catch on fire when hit by fireball. Uh, he does not. He does not. Okay. Um, no, I'm I'm keeping that in mind whenever things are happening. Um, the sparks aren't aren't able, and with this being a bog area, this w this one would not quite work well because everything's very wet, very damp. Because of the humidity. Very humid. Very humid. All right. All right. This brings us to Brea. Brea is going to. Uh, oh God. All right. Brea is going to um, possibly do something very foolish here. Uh, she is going to uh, jump up and attack with two daggers. Uh, kind of, very much, almost similar in the way that. Um, uh, but she jumps up, slams one dagger into the side, uh, slowly uh, slamming, it into, slamming it into the arm, finding purchase with it. She then pulls herself up with it on, and then slams the other one into its upper shoulder um, and releases both daggers and jumps off. Uh, uh, so yeah, 16 points of damage in total to, uh, the, to the troll from both daggers. All right, jumps off, jumps off lands back where... Ends back right next to you, Tyrion. All right, and guards are all dead. This brings us to Tyrion. Okay, so where be I at? Right here. How did I? Yeah. Okay. How did I was my screen was showing me somewhere else. So he's taken up all four of those squares, right? I can just yep. attack him from here. Yep. You can attack him from there. Okay. So I'm gonna do that with my. Lo um, that shield thing only lasts for a minute. Is that back on my arm? It's now, it's or? only been about six seconds. This whole thing has only been about okay, six seconds. Okay, that's all. It's I was still checking. there. It's still it's still up. All right, so I am then going to pull out my other dagger. All right, and I'm gonna attack him with my long sword and my dagger. That's what we were talking about earlier, right? All right, so okay. long sword first is going to be so as you as you dart out as you dart out around around you're able to as you as you dart out around your shield you take a slash with your long sword foom aiming at aiming at the wrist Okay that's 21 on that That'll hit And uh, I'm going to use my divine spite and expend a spell slot on that hit 
All right. So do you want me to roll the damage on that first, or should roll I roll the, the dagger roll the, as well? Roll the, roll, the, roll the dagger attack just so we get that out of the way. 22. Yep, that'll hit too. Okay. So that'll be... Longsword damage is... 8 plus 5. That's 12. 12 points of damage for the longsword. As you mm -hmm. slash, as you slash across its wrist, as you slash across its wrist, you are able to cut good solid, like almost like three inches, three inches into into this hulking beast's um, wrist. You pull out your long, you pull your longsword out. You turn, you turn around. You ch or not even turn around. You just you with your offhand take your dag take your dagger and. Uh, it well, the divine smite would be on that as well. So. Yeah, I don't know. It's the the same arcing uh, divine energy as you as you slam into. The, oh, well, that actually changes the whole thing. Yeah, I need uh, to roll for, two more d8 for, for that. Just for then. Well, oh, fuck. Jesus. Well, that's why I was asking what order you want me to do this in. Yeah, do I've the divine smite. Do the divine smite then. In addition with that. All right. So two and four. That's going to be eighteen total. Jesus. From the long sword. All right. So as. Okay. All right. I love my shield, by the way. Right, so I just want to say. Yeah, as you, uh. So, as you, uh. As you, um. As you, as you, as you arc. As you arc through the air with your longsword, you. Instead of sinking, uh. You're able to slice right as it. Right as the claw is reaching out toward you, you. S manages to dodge past it you sl slice upward uh, right through cutting straight through the wrist uh, halfway all the way through the entire front the entire right hand just goes foomp, right onto the ground right next to you uh, with your off hand you take your dagger foomp, foomp, uh, as it as it uh, goes sailing directly at uh, directly at the troll slams into its chest where right. I did five damage with that all right uh, with the dagger Oh, no, I'm sorry, 8 damage. Uh, yeah, 8 damage. So, question. Yes? Just so I can envision it, how is this shield thing working? The shield is literally just floating in midair right now. I know, it's so awesome! So, basically, he, like, had it in his offhand, he, like, made it go up into the air, like, in some divinely paladin he way, spoke, and he's attacking. He spoke, he spoke the command word, the item responded to it, it, uh, it literally just activated, it's, it now is, like, floating there, and there's, like, 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 slight green electricity, like, like electric arcane electricity like kind of arcing off it like every once in a, like every like second or two at like that it's like it's 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 creating a shield basically directly in front of him but he he for this one he dodged around it he sliced through the uh the thing's um wrist chucked the dagger and now he's back behind and then he kind of like went right back behind it so okay. it's just still providing the ac bonus it's just not he just doesn't have to hold it for this round gotcha. or for, for a full minute for so ten rounds, if it's, each it's round is six seconds, time. it's it's a long time. Oh god, that's amazing. It's he can only use it once per long rest though. So it's it does have its uh, it does have its. Uh, it it's gone. it's not it something does. I can just throw out. Yeah. Really okay. Telling. It's it's pretty sexy. Yes, right. it is. It has a name. Uh, move, this brings us to a mural. You're up. I'm going to unform myself back into a human. All right. Uh, as the uh, so you guys, first time seeing this, uh, as um, uh, as uh, for there's this uh, there's this odd blast of blue of like kind of blue white energy as all of a sudden the panther stands up on two legs and just phew, panther form melts away and standing in front of you is an elf is an elven female um, is an elven female um. Wearing a ba wearing a uh, basic basic torn kind of torn and slightly tattered uh, hooded cloak with the hood currently off her head. Um, there's an ornate uh, leather chest piece that she is currently wearing uh, that seems to have the symbol of a dragon uh, etched across it etched across it. It uh, goes down to about her mid uh, goes down to about her mid thigh. There's a wood shield slung across her back um, and I. Uh, uh, and a long scimitar, that scimitar-like sword that is currently hanging at her side, at, at her waist at this moment in time. Um, leather leather boots uh, come up to uh, come up to her knees, um, and uh, she is standing there, uh, facing down this troll with a very bestial growl and bestial look on her face at this point. And I would like to spend a level two spell slot and use moonbeam on it. 
Go for it. I rolled a t- nat 20. Well, shit. Yes. <laughs> Go for it. Oh. <laughs> That's four tonight. That's amazing. That's crazy, oh, guys. God. Oh, God. This, 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 this is gonna hurt. Thank you, Advantages. And Moonbeam's gonna be... Moonbeam's gonna be ridiculous. That's, a six. That's 14 damage times two. Hold on. Um... But I don't know what to add to that, though. Five foot radius. Okay, forty. Okay, so uh, where are you? Where are you focusing it on? Are you focusing right on the person? Right, right on, the troll? on the troll. All right. This is gonna hurt. All right. Uh, when the creature. Is... I hit fourteen damage. Shit. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna draw this in here real quick. That's twenty eight oh. with the crit. And you roll. Uh, takes. But it has to make a Constitution saving throw first. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Then you add your, your modifiers on. What's your spell DC? I don't know where that would be here. It's on your spell page. Uh, it should be up at the top and should spell saves DC. Spell save. I don't see it here. Or for other adding purposes, it is after I find the oh. magic portion of it. Is it my wisdom? What? I think it's probably wisdom. It's 16. It is 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your wisdom modifier. Thank you. All right, so it does make it does make it save, so it's going to make so it's going to be half damage. Okay. It takes 2d10 radiant damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. I hit 14 damage on a crit, so it'd be 14 damage. Okay. So so how much? Okay, so how much damage was it? Fourteen. Fourteen, uh, in total. Yep, with the two rolls. To do, uh, you two didn't. Ten. You didn't add your modifier though. Make sure you add the spell attack modifier. Which would be your your wisdom. Which your wisdom modifier. Seventeen. Yep. So seventeen. So seventeen halved, or is seventeen the half? 17 Seven, the fourteen. Half. Fourteen is the half. Okay. Plus three, is seventeen. So seventeen. So yeah, it's be a total seven. So it'd be uh, yeah, we'll say seventeen. Okay. Nice. Uh, so as as uh, as this elven female uh, foc- uh, focuses, uh, closing her eyes for a moment, you see a white energy slowly coalesce around her, and all of a sudden, in the in the middle of this fog, there's just this blast of moon energy that and moonlight that just comes streaming and screeching down onto. Uh, um, onto this troll, it lets out a gigantic howl. Uh, it's looking pretty rough. Uh, uh, there is a, there is now a, um, currently encased in, not encased, but like just like being shown on like a spotlight moonbeam onto this, uh, on on this troll right now. Um, there's some blood trickling out. It's missing a hand. It's missing a claw. It's missing its right claw. Uh, and this brings us to Thangart. Oh no, sorry. This brings us to the troll. I lied. Fucking a. So this is the troll's turn right now? This is the troll's turn. Moonbeam hits again right now. Yep, that is true. So oh. go ahead and roll your two uh go ahead and roll your two D ten. That's a six. And that is a seven, which is thirteen plus three is sixteen damage. Alright. Mural. How yep. do you want to do this? How do you want to do this? Yes. It's happening. Oh. <laughs> on your first burn. session, too. Just on your first session. Damn. Burn. Just let it burn and read. <laughs> so as the troll, as the troll uh, missing, currently it's right, currently I'm missing its right crawl, claw reels up to, to getting ready to slam, uh, getting ready to basically take a claw strike at, uh, at Brea um, again. Uh, the mo- it, it it looks up and it is just absolutely blinded by the moon. The moon ener- the moon uh, radiant energy just slams directly slams directly into it. Um, but it's not a large thing. The the beam the beam slowly gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it is just focusing on about a square inch of the troll's uh, in the middle of the troll, troll's forehead. The beam just go- starts burning. You see a slight fire in the middle of the forehead, and just all of a sudden, uh, right. Uh, Riven, as sh- you see, shooting out the back of its skull, this blinding uh, beam of uh, just pure moonlight uh, as um, it goes slamming outside of the back of the, uh, the troll's skull. Uh, it's, it lets out a gigantic howl and falls backward 
um, dead. Ooh. Well. <laughs> K.O. Oh. oh. Shit. <laughs> As I said, it was going to have a bad day. <laughs> oh my god. So, what race did we say that Emerald was? Emerald is a elf. What else? And, um, so... So now that uh, so now these uh, uh, everyone, if you are, uh, as you guys are retrieving your weapons, whether it be daggers um, or arrows or I'd like to loot some people, you would like to loot. You are more than welcome yeah, to do yeah. that as well. I'm definitely gonna we loot? loot that first troll I killed with all that holy fire. And so I'm gonna take a look at the can one I take I a need. second to talk about loot? Yes. Do we each have to loot separately, or can we just loot as a party? As no, I'm I'm I mean, having you just party. loot. I'm just having you loot as a party at this point, and you guys okay. will. Because in the past, can... been we've had to loot separately. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm trying to move more in the progression of you guys looting as a full party. Oh, just, just like as run... our cohesion moves along. Yeah, and I just I just run down a list and I say this is what you found. Um, which across all of the across all of the um. Uh, across all of the individuals, you find a total of, uh, what do we have? Uh, you find a total of, uh, 700 gold. Nice. You find a total of 700 gold pieces. Um, the troll, uh, you, uh, Tyrion, you look over the bodies, um, or Tyrion and, uh, and Mural, both of you look over the bodies, and you get the sense that you could possibly harvest some things from them if you are, if you are wanting to. Harvest? Um, sure. You could sure. harvest different pieces of the troll if you feel so compelled to. Stuff to store um, in the brothel bag. Uh, uh, well, the, the brothel bag's just like a bank it's, account. It's, it's, it's not basically like just, it's, it's a money pouch. It's bank. not an actual bag. It's not an actual bag of holding. You don't have one of those yet. <laughs> No, that's what I was saying. Like, if it was a bag of holding, I'd shove the whole troll down in there and let it just <laughs> rot, and we'd, we'd pick through it later. Unfortunately, you probably would not be able to do that, because the troll's, like, freaking ten feet tall, and, like, it wouldn't really fit in the bag of holding. Dude, my friend, I have a sword. I can <laughs> yeah, you make, could make up, manageable but... <laughs> pieces of the troll um, if I really needed said, to. Uh, We're not going to get into you, that. You could... Yet. I was gonna say you could uh, you you could harvest things if you feel so compelled to. Otherwise, uh, there's nothing much on the troll apart from the um, apart from your weapons, which you guys uh, so like main daggers that you guys fired. Um, so uh, Riven and Tyrion, you guys are able to find both of your uh, keen daggers if you pitched them or chucked them at things. Okay, so Tyrion, you're able to find them. Uh, uh, Karma, you get everything back as well. I think you already had everything back. But I yeah, think you I were still it. submerged, actually. Uh, and uh, that progresses from there. So standing in front of you um, is currently this very bestial, almost kind of um, purse, elven, female individual, female elven individual. She's about uh, almost almost six feet tall. Uh, not almost six feet tall. About a little bit like between five to five to six feet tall. Um, her skin is a very very dark copper. Um, uh, looking at her eyes, they are also they are also very very. They're not quite copper, but they're more of a more of a more of almost a brown hazily type um, color as well. Her hair is uh, her hair is black, flowing down just pa just past her shoulders to her mid back. Um, it has a few very uh, neat ornate braids in it. Um, as uh, and she is standing there currently in front of you. Hello. How you doing? Uh, <laughs> there Jesus. it is. <laughs> oh, jeez. And this is how everything goes to hell. Your uh, well, you uh, brought an elf lady well, into the you. session, so. I did not. I just said swag. Uh, may I uh, introduce our group here? My name is Salix. This is Tyrion. Watch out for him. <laughs> oh, no, I. Hello, hey, that Salix. Is, Hello, uh, Tyrion. You want a drink? <laughs> um, not right now. No. We have we have better, more present issues at hand. If I may ask, uh, what what brings you out here? In the, Rain date it is. The uh, the foggy, marshiness of the high moors. I was actually following you guys for quite some time. Whoa, stalker! Um, I was more among the line of 
trying to run away from people and came across your party. Clarissa, at this point, your brain flashes back to um, when you were sitting in the cargo hold in chains, and during that three-hour period, a small cat wandered down onto the stairs, looked at you for a few minutes, and wandered back up. Hey, wait a minute. Wait. I think, do you recognize me, elfie lady? Yes, I do. Aha! I knew it. Wait. Wait, go ahead, sorry. Uh, there was a cat on the ship that was more than just a cat. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you are a druid. I think that's what they call you people. Yes? Yes, yes, I am a druid. Druid, yes. Uh, druid. This druid has been spying on us for uh, some time, I believe, now. Uh, but that's okay because we're friendly, right? At this point, Clarissa is going to use press the digitation to completely clean herself up. All right, you cast you cast a spell. Wait. Blast of wind that just completely makes this pink dress um, dry and perfect. And as soon as this spell fades, it's merely soaked again by the fog that is coming around you. <laughs> Karma is going to say, "Oh, big care surprise. to explain? Care to explain why you've been following and not doing anything for the longest time?" <laughs> big surprise. Was... The gnome likes someone who watches. I, what? I was afraid that you guys would turn me in. Turn you if into was... what? I promise turn you into what? Yeah, you already a panther. A that only happened once. I don't mean that sort of turn into like a creature. I meant as being turned into a noble house to be possibly killed. We're turning well, we wouldn't want things. that. Here's a question, though. Uh, you want to turn into some rabbits? <laughs> I would like to use Thorn wow. on Tyrion and <laughs> Yeah, go for it. Uh, party go. Fucking roll your roll your attack. On not, me? Not the first time our party has attacked 15. each other. <laughs> a, a, uh, three nope. is eighteen. What was nope. it? Matchroom's risk a while ago. I Thorn did. Yeah. yeah, I did, and no, that does not yeah. hit. No, it won't hit. Uh, no, so but uh, at, for flavor, as uh, as as soon as you, as soon as those words leave your mouth, uh, Tyrion, uh, a whip a, a whip made of just nothing but vines and thorns um, uh, appears in her hand. She slashes at you. Luckily, your shield is still active, so you're able to kind of duck behind it. and <laughs> Slams across the front of your shield. Um, uh, as uh, apparently, she seems to not be taking much uh, interest in you. So. Uh, okay, not much good. interest. She just tried to whip me. So, <laughs> Dude, that was gonna said, happen. we have more pressing issues at hand here. You guys yeah. are in a sacred elven forest, fog, and why are you guys do? Can Salix speak? Yep, Salix, go for it. Uh, so, did we see you this morning running along the shore when there was some sort of uh, river siren song, enchanting? No. No? Okay. Was something else? Yeah, Riven, go for it. Um, and so, uh, what, why, why are you afraid of us turning you in? Did you do something that is back uh, worth turning back you in? My, yes, back in my back in my home in the capital in in the forest. There, I was a I was a noble. I ended up tried saving a human noble who came to do negotiations. He died taking a potion I gave him, even though it was not wrong and made in make in making. And now the um the kingdom of um what is this here? Um Danforth is looking for me and, re and ready to prosecute me for killing this other noble. Oh, so you're wrongly accused, so you claim. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Danforth's a long way from here, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. I've been I've been stalked by poachers and hunters for the last three months. Hmm. At this point, Clarissa for... will yawn loudly and go, Oh, all this talk of nobles and executions is so tiresome. I think we're going to get along, Elfie Lady. Quiet, I don't have any no. love for... Uh, Royalty, either. Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, this, uh, this sounds quite fascinating, but if I may suggest, we should uh, you should come along with us for now. Uh, your uh, prowess in battle would be much welcome for our immediate uh, needs. Uh, if you see this library uh, over here, uh, we're trying to find a group called the Naxaran Snakes and see if uh, they have any knowledge about uh, an issue that we're investigating. Could I do a history uh, Once that is resolved, we could go back to our ship and talk more in depth. Um, at, as all this is going on, both Karma and Riven ha have like not disappeared, but like they're they have like they've kind of like into the pretty much into the shadows of the uh, of the bog around you. Um, you still sense their pre like uh, Tyrion as you extend your mind. Uh, you sense their presence, but they are not anywhere within visual range at the moment. You get the feeling that they're keeping an eye out uh, for anything that might be approaching. As you guys did just kind of destroy all the scouts. Of what is supposedly the base of the Najaran snakes. Is that five scouts and two trolls? Five scouts and two trolls, yep. Yeah, okay. Could I do okay. a history check on what uh, what he just said? Because he said something about that the Najaran sna yeah. Najaran snakes. Uh you can roll a history check if you want, yeah. That would be a fourteen plus three is seventeen. Uh Thinking back on it, you remember hearing thing, uh, some things as as your time wandering around the streets of Loudwater. Uh, you uh, you remember hearing a few things about them, primarily that they uh, primarily that they were a group of bandits who uh, potentially was involved um, with uh, different illegal activities from um, stealing individuals to slaves tra to slave trading to uh, the movement of uh, goods from one area to another. Um, that's uh, you. You did hear a slight mention of a library, but nothing that was fully concrete to the best of your ability. Okay. All right. Um. Uh. Yep. Uh. Tyrion the shield. Uh. Tyrion speaks the word. The shield floats back onto it. He. Uh. You feel the weight return to your arm. Um. The library is stand is directly in front of you guys. Uh. You look at it. It is. It is a. Uh. From what you can tell, a three-story tall. Uh, building cylindrical building that rises out of this moor. Now that you're getting a better chance to look at it, um, good solid. I'm, I'd say almost a good solid about uh, uh, about eighty to hundred feet up um, is where the the roof is, and there are just elves. There is statues of elves currently all in a circle facing in towards the library. Um, the top, uh, the top, the top, uh, fourth of the, the top fourth of the library, you can see, uh, what used to be very intricately and designed, uh, stained glass windows. Um, some of the glass panels are broken in. Um, other ones are still standing, but look like there's a, a slight amount of, a decent amount of dust that is currently, um, uh, that's currently accumulated on the windows themselves. Um, you, uh, it, it, the the entire structure does look very elven in nature, very much like this entire uh, building was constructed um, for the housing of knowledge and um, for the housing of knowledge and for a place that would very uh, very much be welcoming to uh, for elven kind or for elves to come, uh, write learn, um, and also spend time meditating on, upon the areas of different life. Uh, you do see uh, part of uh, one, part of the bogs, one of the streams, does flow into a small um, a small opening on the side of, on the, side of the building and proceeds uh, to, uh, to flow directly through the middle from what you can tell. Um, just, off to the right of, just off to the right of that, there is a large arching doorway um, where one of the doors, uh, uh, where both of these very, very large wooden doors, which you swear should be completely destroyed by now, are still standing, um, very much intact. Well, uh, what are we waiting for? Should probably, they probably heard us coming, so. I agree. Let's, uh, get so all let's up go in take there. care of this and get out of this fog. <clears throat> Uh, before right. we go in, Clarissa wants to look like around the door to see if there's like any inscriptions or anything that looks like it might be writing or anything like that. Perception check. Sure. Uh, it's reasons. Nineteen. No, 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 nineteen. Um. 
All right. So as you're as you're uh, looking around, um, as you're looking around, you uh, you see above the arching doorway there is uh, there is Elven script there. Uh, do you speak Elven? I will in a second. I'm going to cast Comprehend Languages on myself. All right. He says with uh, like, two elves in the party and yeah, a half elf. <laughs> and I don't trust you people. <laughs> uh, they can actually read this shit. Hey, you're cramping <laughs> Clarissa's style. Yeah, fair play, fair play. <laughs> fair point. All right. All right, so I know every language now, or I can understand <laughs> it. Including the language of love. Yeah, I already we'll, knew that. We'll see if that, we'll see if that ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> it has twice already. That I paid for one of them doesn't count. You paid for one of them, and you the paid other... for one of them twice. <laughs> and yeah, so <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> God. Uh, You're welcome buddy. to the D campaign. Okay, so I'm trying to pull this up. It's not pulling up for some odd reason, so I'm gonna pull it up on. Um, I'm trying to add these pictures, and they're not adding, which is pissing me off. In the meantime, Karma's gonna ask for any healing that the group can manage because okay. I'm on death's door right now. You're on death's door. He is, he's looking hurt. Nah, man, we're at the library. Uh, I'm gonna toss you my HP potion. Alright, okay. so for some reason these aren't pulling up, so I'm gonna just have to pull them up in actual... and show them on stream, which is gonna be dumb. How's everyone feeling on hit points? Uh, we could always like take five the... minutes. I'm fine. Take a short yeah, rest. You guys can, yeah, you guys can take a short rest. Um, Roll some so hit compelled. dice. Yeah, yeah. If you feel so compelled. Yeah, let's do that then. All right, so uh, before you en before you so before you guys enter um, before you guys enter the uh, the library itself, you take a few moments, uh, take a seat down, take a seat down um, just outside. Clarissa, as you're looking over the Elven script, you see the Elven script. Um, you see the Elven script uh, is consistently shifting and changing um, ab over the doorway. Um, it is. It is not ever stationary. You're able to make out a few words here and there, um, words such as uh, knowledge, um, words such as uh, 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 a phrase of a phrase such as those who seek, um, and uh, or those who are seeking. Um, you see find up there a few times, uh, and uh, 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 different things like knowledge. Knowledge is power. Um, different things like that. Um, Different things along those lines. You see, as the Elven script is constantly transforming and shifting um, over over the uh, arch over the archway and the doorway. And knowing is half the battle. So, can somebody explain to me how hit dice work? Uh, during a short rest, you can roll your hit dice. Uh, you should have a maximum that you can roll each day. I think it's. Uh, It'll be four level, plus, it? whatever. Yeah, it's four plus something. Four D. Six, eight, ten. I don't know what your hit dice yeah, are so as a rogue. For, my so hit dice rogues, are eight. So for rogues, you can roll four d. You can roll up to four d six per day in order to heal up. Yeah, I think you six. get to add one per. Level. And you can roll them one at a time. Yeah. And that's only out of combat. It's only during yeah. like short. It's like during it's a short, a short rest. rest. So if you want to roll your hit dice, you can. It's like basically time taking that you're able to like manage your wounds. Uh, be able to just take a moment to breathe. Um, pretty much what you're doing. So, uh, hit dice. It's one d8. So you're able to roll four d8 because it's one. I believe one per. Yeah, I believe. So. Um. Plus whatever things you have. That make you oh, fire. sweet. Yeah, Riven, you got really quiet, by the way, dude. Oh, really? Better. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. There we go. I was eating, so my mic was away from my mouth. No, that's it's, fair. That's not right. So, so if you guys want to roll up, hit dice. Feel free to do that uh, now. Um, Can I thing. stand watch? Yeah, you. I, I assumed you were standing watch when you went stealth. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's just a niche backup. Yeah, I just assumed you were standing watch, and I assumed. Okay, so you guys. So after taking a minute, bandaging your wounds, um, taking a moment just to kind of catch your breath after. A pretty intense fight with some very, very giant ass creatures. Um, uh, you guys make your way uh, up to the door of the library. Okay. All right. Are you guys walking in? Or are you? Uh... Um, I'm going to cast detect magic to see if there's any arcana inside that could possibly hurt us. All 
right. As you um, take a moment and uh, feel the ener feel the ener uh, feel the arcane energy, you you ba you base you allow for your um, you allow for your mind to be fully open. You stretch your mind out towards the door. Um, there appears to be no nothing arcane about the door apart from what you detect is the arcane the the the, ar the, the very simple arcane um spell that is to keep this text flowing above the, above the archway um and continually moving and shifting so that no one ever can fully really see or understand what it is trying to say um okay uh, but apart from that you really don't know you really don't notice or detect anything else okay. there so by the looks of it there is no arcane like arcane Traps set here. As far as, 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 size as, far as I know. As far as you can tell. All right. I would mention that to the party. Alright, go you mention that to the party. That there is no arcane traps that I can sense so far. Oh, how disappointing. Thank you guys. Copy. Alright. As you enter um, as you push open, is some, who's pushing open the doors, or is it just kind of the party in general? I think I bust through the door before anybody could say anything or move. Uh, All right, so before anything, Thango gotta rushes. Gotta love that dwarf. Gotta love that fucking dwarf. <laughs> so before, uh, so pretty much before, at, or as uh, as um, Emural is getting these words out and saying, "There's nothing." Thangor just rushes through the door, um, basically takes his foot and just kicks it in. Uh, both doors swing open without really any resistance. Um, as you are... So, just to be clear, they didn't hit me in the face this time? No. <laughs> Luckily. As you, uh, as you, as you walk into the, as you walk into the, um, to the main room and the main hall of the library, unfortunately, this is where you're going to have to look at stream in order to see what the fuck I'm, I'm trying to describe to you, is, um, uh, you're enter, you are greeted with a, v you're, you're greeted with a branching off to both sides of you, is archways um, that lead uh, down very long cylindrical hallways following the radius and following the outside, um, not the radius, the, uh, the circumference of the library um, with uh, what appear to be shelves and shelves and shelves of, of books. Some of the shelves look as though they are, uh, they have been looted or they have been, um, or, the, uh, or the books have been torn and sundered. Um, uh, torn, torn and sundered. Other, other bookshelves look very, very um, pristine and like they've never been touched. Um, as you progress forward into the library, I'm gonna actually pull up the main map now so that you guys can check that and see what the first floor looks like. Um, uh, oh. You see, you see the slight, you see the stream uh, that was entering through the library uh, flow through the through through the middle uh, and then. Sp branch off into two um, two separate streams around this small island with bridges that are over that are going over um, over the stream and then the from what you can tell the streams come back and form back into one stream from there uh, as you progress closer in towards the center of the library you are able to look straight up and you see three you see the floor you're on another two floors above you um, Another two floors above you, uh, with more books and more, from what you can tell, more bookshelves and more things. There's light, uh, a slight amount of light coming in from the from the stained glass windows above, um, that uh, are once again also around the entire circumference of this entire building. Um, in the middle of, uh, in the midst of the, in the midst of the, um, uh, the rest the rest of the library looks, there are desks, there are uh, chairs, but they all look as though they've been broken or weathered and. Uh, just very, very um, broken uh, and uh, very broken and just uh, um, molded through uh, over time uh, for they just were made it. Uh, all in all, this place looks like kind of a messy kid's bedroom, surprisingly. Uh, looks like somebody hasn't really cleaned up in a long time, but uh, it looks like some place that if under the right, under the right uh, guidance and time, they possibly could uh, come and make this a functional library again. Um, Are we looking? Place you, place uh, you guys on the map. 
So the, the map of the library, or, or is there a picture we're looking at right now? Well, the picture was on my stream, so you oh. had to be on my stream. To I was wondering remember. what Thursday was talking about. Yeah. So you guys are now currently in the library. Um, uh, you. Uh, you're currently standing in the library. Uh, not necessarily in the stream, but you're all in the library itself. Um, there are bridges that go across. Uh, there is about all you guys see in this place right now. Uh, what do you wish to do? Six wants to check out the really cool island thing. Go for it. It's a Salix as you make your way over across to the island. You find what appears to be four tables, or um, uh, uh, basically four tables or four um, like kind of counter type things. You get the feeling that this was a place for uh, looking over it. You get the feeling this was kind of a place for um, uh, just kind of general like information. Kind of the very very uh, a very very um, place for people to. Ruse books, ask questions about about with a different knowledge in the library. So the ancient elf mystical reception desk. Basically, yeah. Okay. Are there any? Is there a person attend like at that reception desk? There's no one here, right? No, this place, is, from what you can tell, is completely abandoned. Okay. So no sign of bandits and or missing children that were sold as slaves. Uh, make a group perception check. Oh. Also, can I look for things like weapons, gold, trinkets, potions? Yeah, make Never. it, yeah. So I'll make, oh, roll two perception checks. I rolled a 23. For perception? Good lord. Yeah, 18 and a 5 with a, with a modifier. You perceive this, this by the <laughs> third floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so, uh, Riven and Emiral, you guys, uh, or both of you, um, as you are walking throughout the library. Amiral, you spot off to uh, far farther in kind of a darker recess of the of the uh, library. You spot a um, a staircase that leads one that uh, leads one going up, which you uh, take to lead to the um, upper floors, and an another staircase that also would lead down uh, that begins heading down uh, downstairs as well. Okay. Um, Riven uh, for looting. Around, uh, walking around, uh, you find a very, very walking around. You kind of peruse. You see a few uh, different bookshelves um, that look very pristine, as though the books uh, possibly could be worth something. Um, as you're as you're perusing, you find uh, three very, very, very in very decent uh, um, not progression, but de uh, decent uh, preserved. Reserved, yeah. Reserved um, status. I can't think of words tonight. I'm tired, guys. Um, you find three very, very rare and preserved uh, books um, that you think possibly could be worth a little bit of gold if sold to the right individual. Uh, Tyrion, Karma, Clarissa, Salix. Um, you guys as well are able to walk around however you guys are able to find, like, between all four of you are able to find two books. Uh, that you think might be something that is either worth gold or might be worth an addition to a library in a better in a better um in a better city. Can I tell what language they're written in? Um, Girl. looking around, uh, the books are written in every single form of language. Some that the some that, that I you, took. Uh, what are the three that you have? I don't know. Three. You have oh. three. Tell me. What do you know? Oh, <laughs> no I common. know. Oh, I know common, elvish, and gnomish. Yeah, you see books here that are written in Elvish, Gnomish. You see some that are, look like they're written a very demonic script. Um, you see some that are written in a ver that are written in something that looks Elvish but isn't quite. It's it, it's a it seems to be an odd form. Taking a moment to try and decipher it, you uh, could make an intelligence check uh, to see if you can figure out what it is. Um, Take those in four. Yeah, and then um, I don't. My intelligence is not good. It it, it looks like something you've heard in a fairy tale, what? but you Five. can't really quite tell what it is. At this if point, only so. there were someone in your party who could read every language right now. And you said that those are the three that, that I looted. Uh, those were the three that. Well, I'm just. This is just in cross in general. You see hey. the, of everything. The three that you looted. Yeah, that's um, and that you or that you that you personally like. Like are thinking about taking at this point because you haven't actually said you took them yet. No, I'm taking them. Um, 
Okay. As you pick up the first two, uh, you find one that is written in Elvish, and it appears to be a, a full tome that is dictate that as the Elvish um, history from uh, the beginning of Zebros all the way up to about uh, about a hundred years ago, uh, from from what you can tell. The second book you pick up is uh, a book that is. Um, very that that is that weird kind of fairy tale language. You can't quite tell what it is, but you think it might be working well. Uh, it might be a decent one. Um, and the third one is one that you can assume is uh, from knowing what you know about dwarven script. It looks like it's written in dwarvish. Uh, what about the two? Guard will take a look at that. Uh, Clarissa, what how, what's that spell that you cast again? Uh, uh, comprehend languages. Thank you. You don't know how long that lasts. Over it's an hour. Okay, yeah. So, um. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, the two that you got, the rest of the party found, um, one looks as though it is written in, uh, so Clarissa, as, as this one is the one you found, you find one that, uh, appears to be written in Celestial, um, it's a very odd oh. tome, uh, it's a very interesting book, uh, something that is, like, as you, as you grasp it, it's lighter than you expect it to be, uh, ah. oh, and, it's, like, you, you have a fear for a moment, that if you let go, the book would just stay in place, or it would float down very slowly to the ground. Um, the second book, the second other one you find is written in common, and it's a uh, is a history it is is um, a normal history uh, book um, that was written by uh, a very very old uh, elven bard of what is supposed what is known as um, uh, the Fall is what the book is titled. Ursa's well, gonna bag that book written in Celestial for herself, and I also want to look around. Make a sleight of hand check. Uh, sure. What? Did, that's dexterity, I guess, right? I believe so. Okay. Especially if you're bagging that for yourself, sleight of hand. Okay. Sleight of hand is dexterity. Uh, yeah. uh, I just need to my dex modifier ten, so probably not. So um, as you're as you're as you're trying to shuff it stuff it into your own uh, pouch, um, uh, Tyrion sees you doing this because uh, you're trying. Like, you're, you're sitting there. You're trying to kind of like be a little stealthy with it, but uh, Tyrion sees you sees you doing it, um, as well as uh, Th Salix sees you doing it as well. What you got um, there, Clarissa? Uh, just a just a book that's. Has some rather curious magical properties that I think I am best equipped to study, so I think I should just keep this. That yeah, sounds fine. Yeah, sounds I got no problem thing. with it. At which point you hear a blood curdling female scream echo oh, through the library. Can we tell where it's coming from? Put the book down. Put the book per down. Perception check. Going in the bag. All of us? Uh, yeah, I'm taking all three books. Oh, not 20. <laughs> all right. Um,. Uh, as as this blood curdling scream just echoes throughout this entire library, you start your eyes start darting around. You start glancing. You ready your weapons. You you look around, and as you're as you're looking around, um, the majority of you off the majority of you off to your left hand side, you see a faint green glow pulsing, pulsing uh, down one of the aisles uh, farther uh, farther down to your left. Um, who's up at the top? Who's this? Uh, that would be Riven. Riven, this one is also off to your left. It's a little closer, but it's, uh, it is off to your left. You see a slight pulsing green glow. Yeah, sure, I rolled spread. a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> He's completely... Okay, so, <laughs> okay, so you hear the scream. You're not really sure where it's coming from, then? You... <laughs> you're in a library. Yeah. Oh, books! You're, you're in a library and somebody's screaming. Really loud. And he tripped. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're about, yeah, you're about to bolt, and, um, uh, you realize that there's, oh, there's a bookshelf. Boom! And you slam into it. <laughs> your book's tied to the ground, you land on your ass. Um, okay. the rest of you, what are you guys doing? I want to go towards it. Horace is going to sprint towards it. Where I'm also it? going to run after it. Alright. Uh, unfortunately, I have to do another, uh, another stream check, so if you're watching the stream, I'll, I'll do my best to explain it to you. Um. I'm on the screen, but I won't see it for a few minutes. So. Yeah, you won't see it for a few seconds, but I'll still pull it up so you guys can at least see what I am thinking. So, or if you are an anime fan like I am, you'll understand the reference that I'm trying to go for. Um, so, uh, as as uh, as Clarissa, as you round the corner, 
and then Tyrion close behind as well. As you round the corner, uh, you see standing in the middle of a green, of a green, uh, what you can tell uh, is a magic circle that is just like has arcane script all around it. Um, green light is shooting up, is shooting up from the ground, completely surrounding this uh, individual who has chestnut brown hair. Um, uh, that is currently standing in the middle of this, in the middle of this circle, holding a book in her hands. It is currently open. Her hair is flying straight up towards the top. Think Full Metal Alchemist. Turn it green, and that's the type of circle she's standing in, with the, uh, with the, um, with the light just coming straight up, uh, from the circle itself. Uh, she lets out another blood-curdling scream, um, as the rest of you round the corner. Her back, her back arches forward. As uh, the book uh, is still sti is still is still being, uh, it looks like she's trying to let go of the book, but it is uh, currently still stuck in her hands. Like, Doris is going to try to use prestidigitation to knock it out of her hands without touching it. As you reel back with, as you reel back with your hand, you are you using the wind. I take it. What are you using? What portion of it? Oh, there's a bunch of different things for prestidigitation. Uh, just a like a super strong gust of wind. All right. As you as you take it, you force the wind, you force a gust of wind uh, straight at the straight at the arcane circle. Uh, from what you can tell, uh, there's pages that there's pages and paper that gets f uh, caught up in this wind. The wind you see those pages uh, slant uh, like basically go for, flying towards the circle and then they deviate uh, completely in uh, encompassing the circle at that point, um, going completely around the entire circum uh, circumference of it. Well, that didn't work. What are you guys doing? What else are you doing? Um, I'm going to try and leap and tackle her out of the circle. All right. I uh, this is happening yet. I wouldn't go all yeah, the way yeah. in the circle. Uh, Riven, <laughs> yeah, Riven, you are, Riven, uh, you are able to, you, you have made your way to the aisle. You see, you, you see this, uh, visit, uh, this, um, this visible, basically just, uh, events happening in front okay. of you. Um, so Tyrion, you are race. You're you're running. You you basically take off sprinting directly at toward her. Uh, towards her, make an athletics check. Athletics, I can do you're that. Basically, football tackle her. Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's... Not soccer. And, okay. Well, soccer is football, but we'll get um... into that later. Twenty-four. <laughs> All right. As your as your body um, as as you run and as your body like gets to the edge of the circle you take a you take a leap you jump forward and you're held aloft inch your fingertips inches away from her shoulder there's a spark of arcane f energy <laughs> you're slant you're pushed f forcefully backwards out of the circle at that point karma wants to go into stealth backup mode and karma, like, you duck Car behind a bookshelf karma go ahead and roll stealth uh she lets out another scream at this point you see um the light at this point, the light has, is no longer taking like it's still green, but you mix in with the green, see black shadows begin to emerge from the circle itself and begin to snake their way up her legs. All right, if somebody doesn't have a better idea, I'm going to start chucking fireballs. So you people better think you back. dare throw a fireball in here, Ryan, I will doing? hang you. Ryan, what are you doing? <laughs> hang him. Um, at this point, this the thing? At this point, the 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 uh, the um, the shadows have completely enveloped her all the way, her all the way up to her mid thigh, um, and ever like it just looks like she is uh, like you're you're starting to see almost kind of what the Lady of Shadows looked like, where how her entire body was completely encased in shadow. Uh, you're starting to see that just from her mid thigh down. Right, Raven, what are you doing? Stealthing. All right, Riven, stealth. Riven, Carmen, go stealth. They're back. It. They're backing off into the behind yeah, the bookshelves. Oh, Vanguard, you doing anything? Vanguard, Salix, you guys doing anything? Vanguard literally just left. Yeah. Oh, Vanguard just peace out. Okay. Right. I'm gonna use. 19. How to use Thorn Whip on her to pull her out of this magic circle? Okay, so Thorn Whip from uh, Mural. Salix, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, can I cre uh, use Create Water? You can try to. Okay. I rolled All right. 19. Now it's gonna be a 22. All right. So as as your as your whip as your whip arcs as you take your whip, you arc it toward you arc it towards the arcane circle. The whip, uh, the whip also goes uh, instead of grabbing her, goes around the entire arcane around the entire arcane circle. And try as you try to as it tries to grab her body, it only gets to the outside before it's poof, disintegrated from there. 
torsos. At this point, the shadows have reached her mid waist. At this point, or her mid her, her mid torso. So that's what All I right. Uh, Clarissa wants to try something. I'm going to try to. Hold on, Salix is first. No, no, no I'll torso. let it. I'll let Clarissa go. I don't. Okay, Clarissa, go for it. All right, I want to try to use meta magic uh, to twist whatever energy is slowly consuming her and tie it to myself as well. All right. I oh, meta, God. I need to look up meta magic real quick. So it's, this isn't like the intended use for it, but I think it's within the spirit of it. It's like you can modify your spells to do something different. But I don't right, I'm, I'm just double checking to make sure I'm, we're not fucking that up. So. Yeah, yeah. That, like I said, this isn't. Really, this is like an RP use for it. But. Right. Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's where the that's where this entire thing comes into effect. Um, okay. So you're going to. Solid. Okay. Cool. Uh, make an Arcana check. And I'm gonna touch Clarissa on the sh on her shoulder and give her guidance. With inspiration. Uh, D4 increase on that roll if she needs it. Yeah. Right. And this is magical, so gnome fun. Okay, so D4 inspiration, right? Yep, that's yep. a D4. Okay, Let me, I'm going to roll that in here because I don't have a D4 handy. Okay, so 15 plus 3. Da -da. Okay, 18. As. Oof. Okay, so this could be very interesting. And I'm going to let go of her immediately afterwards. Okay. So, Larissa, as you focus your arca as you focus your arcane energy, you take your you take your hands. You re you are forced like almost trying to like grasp the entire the spell itself. Um, you feel upon your shoulder your the hand of your new comrade Amiro. Um, you feel the ar an arcane energy pulse through your body. You feel uh, like a little bit more empowered than you originally were. You lower the barriers of your shield or of your mind, throwing yourself along the trail of magic. You can sense very, very clearly, like this. This spell is admitting, like in that celestial, like er in that celestial area, that you can like see the magical essences of individuals and see where people are. You can very clearly sense where um, Bria is. Where Bria is, but you can also sense there is something else there, something darker. As you try to get the magic to to pull onto you as well, you feel something dark, something malevolent uh, enter your brain, and you say, and it says, "Only one is needed for now." At which point the shadows have now currently coalesced and are up to her neck at this point. You, Clarissa, you continue to try and force uh, yourself to, uh, to for the magic to begin imbuing itself. As soon as you, as soon as you do, I need you to roll um, a d20. Add your and t add your uh, wisdom modifier on top of that. Okay. And Oops. wisdom. Okay. A fifteen. Okay. As you are trying to get it to, as you are trying to get the magic to to only focus on you, you realize that your magic has gone awry, and that it is no longer just tied to you. As you open your eyes and you still see, and you pull yourself back into yourself, um, a. a away from the road of magic you uh you open your eyes and you see the magic circle that um uh, bria is standing in expand <laughs> and it goes completely encompassing um uh, encompassing you uh mural and any and anyone else who is in a uh 30 foot radius of, um of, uh, uh yeah. wait this is bray standing in the middle of the circle Brea is standing Brea. in the middle of the circle. Oh, uh, yeah. She's over here. I was confused because she. So, over I'm gonna move you guys oh. to where you would be at. Person. So. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is Riven. Riven, you'd be probably about here. Yeah, it looks like I'd be flanking it in the shadows. Um. Yep. I'm gonna move you guys. Uh, Thangard, I'm gonna say was got over there. He's kind of hanging out here. Uh, Tyrion, you raced over. You're standing here ish. Larissa, you're there ish. This is only about a five foot circle. The rest of you are watching down this hallway at this point. Karma, you're behind the bookshelf as well going stealth um the circle uh completely encompasses you at this point you see the shadows 
uh, coalesce up above her head, and with a her entire body, uh, her entire body is sucked inward to a very small point, at which point the point disappears, and it's gone. You guys are now standing in the middle of a magic circle, looking down, you now see the shadows begin to envelop your legs as well. You said this is celestial, correct? Nope, I just said this is magic. Uh, can we try and move? You can try. Okay, I'm gonna try and move. What are you guys doing? Uh, these, shadow, these shadows are creeping up your legs at this point. Okay, Salix is gonna try and run away. All right, Salix, as you try to move, your legs are, your, your feet are currently held in place. As soon as that happens, you take a total of four points of psychic damage. Guys, don't try and move. As you, <laughs> as you cry out and as you cry out in pain, your head arches back and you bring your arms up to your face, uh, trying to get whatever is piercing into your brain out of it. Clarissa's uh, going to try to talk to the entity that was just there that she had sure. talked to. All right, Clarissa, you as well, um, as as you, are you, how are, okay, go ahead. I'm going to try to talk to it magically, like, use okay. message, I guess, to reach out to the shadows, I suppose. Okay, so as you open up your, as you, as you lower your, uh, your defenses, uh, to yourself, um, you, and to your mind, you feel a sharp stabbing pain as what can only be described as basically a rusty nail is being tried to be thrust into your brain. Um, <laughs> Uh, it goes d diving into your subconscious uh, and says, Only one, you are not needed. Uh, uh, then you should probably let us go. Make a concentration check. Yeah. You would say persuasion roll. Concentration. <laughs> <laughs> what, so, what is... D20, add your, uh, believe it's your charisma. I... Yeah. Okay. So it would be okay. Like, con like if you were saying, like you're concentrating, you're concentrating on trying not. You're concentrating on trying to resist this pain at this point in time. Okay. Yeah. I got. You. Okay. It'd actually be wisdom. I'm sorry. No, intelligence. Sorry, intelligence. Well, wouldn't it be? Uh, wouldn't it be whatever your spell modifier is for concentration? Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So for me, it would be charisma, and that's a twenty-two. So as um. As as you as you hear this voice, you're able to push back with your own mental jab. The the pain subsides slowly to a dull th to a dull th th uh, throb, but uh, you are now able to sense some entity currently trying to invade your own personal brain. And what do you say? Karma's or what do you do from there? Uh, I'm gonna ask why if you only need one then why do you still have me and my friends and why did you take that one in particular? Karma, what are you doing? Uh, he wants to look around for that book that she was holding or some source of the magical essence that's coming around. All right at this point uh, the shadows have reached your weight all of your wastes at this point. Um, I was gonna say I'm going to say to cast magic. Evil. Have, have have reached your waist at this point. Um, uh, Clarissa, you hear, you are the one who tied the magic to yourself. This is not of my doing. Well, surely um, somebody so much more powerful than I am could undo this. Hell, I think I could even learn. Yeah, you're. Yeah, you're gonna have to make a persuasion roll at this point. <laughs> oh, sure. please. With disadvantage. Oh, well, okay. That's please fine stop. with me. Please I wanna, stop. I want to interact with this thing. It seems like oh, it could be cool. God. The fact that she's trying to flirt with it makes me laugh even harder. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. This is gonna uh, be so, Karma. As you, Karma, make a perception. Make a perception check. And uh, Salix, what are you doing? Casting protection from evil on myself. Oh. All right. Uh, Sixteen. Uh, Make a all right. So sixteen, uh, Karma. As you look around, you're able to peer through uh, the bookshelf, and you see um, the spot that Brea was standing in. You see, looking down onto the floor, where you expect to see the book, there is nothing there. Fuck. Um, uh, Salix casting. All right, Salix, I need you to. Is it just an instantaneous thing? I take it. Yeah. All right. Um. What does it protect against magic or against instant evil? Uh, so it says, until the spell ends, one willing creature, myself, uh, is protected against certain types of creatures. Aberrations, Celestials, Elementals, Fae, fae Fiends, and Undead. 
Creatures of those type have disadvantage on attack rolls against me, and the target <sighs> myself can also can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed. Okay, so I have to look up something. That's interesting, because I was thinking of, well, I don't have that, but... Tyrion, what are you doing? Are you just... I'm going to channel my divinity and try and turn the Watch faithless, and this is like a Hail Mary throw, because I don't even... Currently, the, the shadows have gotten <clears throat> up to your chest plate chest at this point. And can you read that list off again, please? Uh, the disadvantage, or the disadvantage, yeah. or the things I can't... Or the things. I can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed. By uh, anything that is creatures. evil. Anything that is evil. So okay, cool. the creatures, okay. uh, creatures, yeah. aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. Okay, luckily this doesn't really fall under any of that. So cool. Oh well, <laughs> fuck. I mean, like, it, like it, like uh, we'll get into that later. All oh, right. Um, all right. Uh, so Clarissa, as uh, make, what was your persuasion roll? A sixteen. It was a natural twenty, but this is with disadvantage of sixteen. Um, it, you, you hear a chuckle in the back. I'll be seeing you soon. Nah. At which point the presence vanishes, but the pain is still there. Um, so you take a, an additional two points of psychic damage as well. Um, uh, Tiram, what are you doing? I'm gonna... Okay. I'm gonna use my channel divinity and try and turn the faithless, but this is a bit of a stretch. Uh, bottom of page 87, if you want to look at it. Yeah, I'm pulling it up right now. You're using which one? Turn the faithless? Turn the faithless. Uh, so, as you um, reach up and grasp your holy symbol, um, uh, grasp your holy gra grasp your holy symbol, the oak the oak uh, leaf that um, that is that is the symbol of Rillafane. Um, yeah, I got the right uh, symbol of Rillafane. You feel Rillafane's presence, but it, it, it you feel Rillafane's presence. You feel the spell and the the divine energy take effect. Okay. Um, the shadows on you begin to slowly descend down towards your waist. Everyone else's shadows, they have currently made it up to your neck and are slowly encroaching all around your face at this point. Okay. How did you do that? Uh, it's a fey or a fiend. That's all I know. Okay. Like Clarissa's That's gonna all stop I can talking. tell you. That's all I can tell you. At which point, at, at this point, Riven has uh, has been f fully engulfed in shadows and is uh, that same uh, disappear entire body disappearing into a black orb and then the black orb disappearing again is gone. He's gone. Good. No shit. Uh, Clarissa will go willingly and even try to encourage the shadows. Clarissa is uh, Clarissa starts nagging on the shadows, uh, shouting, "You won't take me! You won't fucking do it!" And then, she's gone too. Great. I. I should be detecting magic still, correct, Shadow? Yeah, you're still detecting magic. So, what is this shit? You have no fucking clue. It's magic. This is, <laughs> this is not something of nature. This is not something that you have come across in your travels. You have no fucking clue. Because it says here that anything within 30 feet of me, you sense magic in a way. You use your action to see a faint aura the... around. Okay, and so you get the sense. Of magic. You get the sense that this is that this magic is not of the material realm. You get the sense that this magic is something that is dark, is From evil, the and is something that has been locked away for centuries. At this point, Karma, your the shadows have wrapped around you, and pff, you two are gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm gone too. Yeah. And yep. Uh, Mural, your shadows also have wrapped around you. Tyrion, uh, I believe that leaves you and Salix still here? Mm-hmm. All right. And what I missed? 
Uh, did Salix not get sucked in? Uh, so Salix, so Thangart, your or not Thangart, uh, Tyrion, your shadows are now about about at your abdomen at this point. They're slowly, slowly going, still slowly going down. It's a bit like you're 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 having to force it down and out of the like force it like to begin pressing off your body. Salix, you got I think one more turn before. Okay. You're gone. Sweet. <laughs> What about Tyrion? I mean, or, or not Tyrion, but uh, Thangard. He's still technically here. Thangard was, I'm just going to say, he was, he was as well. He was, he was probably the first. He was probably like the second one after Ryvan who would have <laughs> just been. Um, he's like, no, nah, let's go. <laughs> he's gone. Yeah, I wasn't fighting it. Yeah, so Salix, what are you doing? Well, there's nothing I can do to stop it, so I guess I'm just going along for the ride now. All right, so Salix. Unless the... is there some sort of, I don't know, RP thing where I can. Uh, pray to Helm, but it probably won't help me. You can try. Okay, I'm gonna pray to my deity All right. for intervention, but uh, that's. Ooh, yeah, that intervention. Um... Well, well, oh, hold on. I'm gonna be thinking of an actual thing that I get. You're thinking of an actual uh, thing from Crit Roll. Divine intervention, which I get at a higher level, so. Yeah. You don't have it yet now. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, I'm just. As, as, as the shadows coalesce around your face, you're able to glimpse up and through the window you're able to make out just a little bit of sunshine sunlight that is coming through the fog you're you're able to say a quick prayer to helm before you are completely engulfed in darkness so it's just me it's just you the shadows are slowly creeping down your body they are they've made it to your waist it's it's at your waist it is becoming much harder and difficult much more difficult you have to really really focus um, in order to do that. So if you want to continue to push them down um, and uh, your body, you oh, need God. a little concentration no. or <laughs> no. arcana. Okay. No, I'm on my own. I, I... All right. I'm going to so... roll the dice here, not literally, because this is d, d so not literally, and I'm just going to let it take me since everyone right. else is gone. As, as, uh, as you release, uh, as you're standing there, you grit your teeth, you think to roll pain, and you say... You think Torelophane and all that is that you stand for, and you're just like, ah, here we go. You let go of your holy symbol. You stop fighting it. You pull yourself deep within your own within the own confines of your mind, setting up mental barriers. You still man. You still end up taking two points of uh, psychic damage from that, um, and just even from withdrawing into yourself so deep. Um, okay. Off off the trail of magic, the shadows, with a renewed vigor, go straight up to your neck. Slowly begin to coalesce around your face. You're able to look off to your left or off to your right real quick and in the middle of um in that on that small island you're able to see a small tree that has risen up in, in a basically a reception area um that you swore wasn't there before so i see the tree and i'm you gone. see you see the tree that's the last thing you see before <laughs> shadows take you okay darkness is all you know Darkness is all you can see. You get there is a weird sensation of falling, falling, falling. You can't tell whether or not you're in consciousness or not. Riven, you wake up in the middle of this circular building, but there's no bookshelves, no anything. It is a flat. Ruined building. As you look, as you stand up, you look out, and you are on top of a mountain. At this point, oh. there are ru oh. there is ruins of what you think, and what appears to be the library's outer wall around you. You hear distant screeches emanating from the darkness. Your eyes slowly adjust. And you see cliffs, mountains, a small road that leads down from, from the library, or from what you assume is the library, the ruined library. There is no water. There is no stream. You look up to the sky. There is no stars. There is no moon. The only s sense of illumination that you can see is... A very, very dim, pulsing, ethereal light that is 
um, slowly moving down the path. As you look around, you see the rest of your party laying unconscious on the ground around you. Bria is not there. And that is where we will pick up again next week. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, so I'm the only one awake, but I can see everybody else. Welcome to the group, Barely. Micah. Welcome Barely. to the Underdark. Oh. No. No, this isn't the Underdark. This is, this is not, not the Underdark. Underdark. I'm thinking nope. this is the Fae or some other realm. It's another either yeah. the Fae or the Celestial. Because she said it was the Celestials, and lucky for me, I can talk with the fuckers. Well, because... I'll tell you right now, this is Fae or Fae. I, I swear the yeah. only thing I said about Celestials was the book. Yeah. Yeah. That Clarissa tried to sneak into her pack. I. It's Fae or Fiend. Yeah, definitely. Because well, that's because the only way my gamble in his, even uh, remotely worked. In his world building speech at the beginning, he specifically mentioned the Fey Wilds and Shadowfall. I like Fey Wild. And by that, I mean Wild Elf Ladies. And if you, as your characters come to, as, as your characters will come, as your characters will come to consciousness, we will be able to do history checks and figure out what the fu what place you guys are in. <laughs> Alright, so that's where we are for the week, talking. And that's where we are for the week. You guys will be coming to consciousness oh, as we as we progress into the RP. Um, they're the only source of light um, at the moment that you are currently able to see, or that Riven is currently able to see, is a dull pulsing, like small light that is currently moving away from you at this moment in time. So um, for the points, for the point of RP for this week, can we just say we're not going to do any world checks? We can only talk to each other about our histories and stuff like that. This will be this will be once you can once you can once you come to consciousness this will be considered you guys taking a long rest. Like all the RP that you do in this in this area will be your long rest up until like as you take like as you guys are getting ready to progress into whatever realm this is that you have just okay got pulled into. Yeah. Mm -hmm.